now waiting to see what is going to be finishing on us us on off and there we go i think the stream is back i think we're back on stream mystic we made it happen oh did it work are we alive i i think we are i'm seeing video and that's something i wasn't seeing for a while i think we're so back okay i'm hoping we're back either way we got car x being picked for for last call over here and not an era pick wait I, arrow's banned uh arrow was mako, banned. mako coming through for one team and not the other and one thing that we have witnessed so far today is mako has a hundred percent win rate that's definitely true so if they can keep that alive the sudubu strikers would take us to a game number three we'll have to see as it is going to be that finny plus drakar composition this time coming through for the side of last call. We'll see how Hook Resets, Frightfully Fresh, and Lumos are gonna be able to pilot a comp like this. We have a hot shot and dead eye start. Uh, and only Frightfully Fresh being the one taking advantage of the dead eye uh, this game on the Finny. But yeah. Obscure Breads finding the KO uh, onto Romello while invisible, I think. Uh, and already double barrier down. Uh, and it is a last call power play coming through. Lumos able to secure the point. Really great start here for Last Call, picking up where they left off as they launch themselves into the enemy goal arc and are able to find themselves quick and early KOs and goals. Now this time Lumos still going to be on that X, so the difference between this comp and what Dubu ran last game is going to be that they do have access to that big powerful melee brawler to just disrupt up in the goal, and they do have access to a little bit of scaling as well as a result of that. Let's see how it is going to be able to pay on off for them as Lumos looking to play at midfield and take control over the core. Freezy Breezy going to find themselves already staggered, and Lumos launches himself into action, wants to get involved, wants to be able to take him off the map while they have the chance to do so, or at least force Freezy Breezy over away from the core, where they can't be as much of a participant. Obscure Brad's going to be able to clear back out in midfield, though. Lumos takes control onto the bottom side, dueling with Grimella, and Grimella able to sneak it past them once again. Yeah, last call looking really dominant at the start of this game. 3Z Breezy has just been running around trying to live for the most part of this uh, entire point here. Uh, and Lumos and Hook Risa is having a great time uh, finding these plays onto the barriers while they know they had the advantage, even though it's not up in a KO or a man advantage. They have that stagger advantage right now, and it's showing. Yeah, they definitely do, and they're looking to keep that stagger advantage as long as they can as they're going to KO Gramella off the bottom. Lumos going to look to pass up to hook resets here. 3Z Breezy disrupts the play a little bit and does buy themselves a little bit of time, but the power play is still present, and there's the KO onto the goal. 2-0 last call. They find themselves another big play. Great KO from Frightfully Fresh. <laughs> finding the Frightfully Fresh finding the primary on Finny. <laughs> what a tongue twister over there. Uh, and still has the advantage of the of the energy. And Grimella, he got, he got hit by only like a couple of abilities and already fully staggered here. Lumos looking low too, uh, but still has a level advantage right now and is able to make use of it, finishing off Grimella here. Breezy Breezy, again, getting hit by only a few abilities here. It's like the Deadeye plus, uh, plus Finny secondary is doing so much to apply that debuff uh, and just a few hits of anything gets uh, anyone from Sindubu Strikers uh, pretty much to no HP. Yeah, it happens so quickly, and it is so difficult to play around for the Sudubu Strikers. Is knocked back away. Both Brawlers fight up against each other. 3Z Breezy ends up winning out on that one and is able to find the KO. What can they do with it here? Is there's going to be the big finish from Frightfully Fresh to clear back out the core and Hook Resets ready to help out the defense. Look at that shot from Frightfully Fresh. Knocks the Hook Resets, or not Hook Resets, knocks Gramella all the way across the map, finds the KO over on the other side, and now Lumos taking control here with 3Z Breezy, still so low on stagger. Gramella respawns, but only in time to watch their second barrier fall. 3Z Breezy taken very low on stagger as well. Gramella going to join them, and Lumos is just bullying the members of the Sundubu Strikers as they look to set up for a clean set number one win. Frightfully Fresh knocking it up towards the top side. Lumos looking to receive, not going to be able to get his hands on it, but Hook Resets wants to receive for themselves. Lumos finds another KO on towards Gramella, who just can't play the dang game. And there's Lumos putting it in the goal. 3-0, set number one, last call. There's so much damage coming out right now that being on the Mako, uh, and normally this, this character that's been so dominant uh, just in the last few games that we've seen, uh, not able to help participate in the damage or the defensive uh, portion that... Rightfully Fresh is doing a wonderful job on, on this Finny. You can see first in the draft had the most amount of EXP taking this Deadeye. This is what I wanted to see. Yes, 
deny the stagger swagger because you know that you're going to outwin in the damage comp do not give the enemy the opportunity uh to to regen right the stagger swagger has been such a key awakening in these last few series that I, i'm happy that it's being taken away when you are in the advantageous position absolutely now starting on offset number two fresh off the draft so let's see how much that draft advantage pays off as threezy breezy is feeling the brunt of it as alumos just absolutely thwacks him with that new found uh, quick strikes and is going to be able to keep them pretty low as a result Breezy able to recover now but hook resets coming in towards the bottom side going to be able to find that second barrier or that first barrier rather Breezy Breezy trying to take back control trying to find a way to play a little bit of Omega Strikers here somewhere or other and will finally be able to knock it back over towards Frightfully Fresh gets hit by the triple take though got to be very careful once that connects look at that damage Hulk resets hunting down 3C uh, Breezy and Lumos able to finish it off. They are so coordinated here when they know that the triple take hits. So it's like, okay, it's, it's time to finish off this person. Uh, and they're doing a great job. Misses the barrier uh, save over there, but Hook resets able to get the rebound. Uh, Gramella trying to finish this off while they have a little bit of an advantage. And yes, finds the perfect bounce behind Hook resets. It's a nice angle behind Fresh as well. Yeah, great stuff there by Gramella to be able to get themselves a little bit of play back in this game. So Dubu Strikers, they want to show more of what we saw for those first two sets. They have it in them. They just need to be able to put together the pieces here. 3C Breezy again hit by the triple take. Has to watch out for Lumos, who does lose quite a bit of stagger themselves. But there's going to be the KO attempt going in for the core flip. Hook resets. Not able to find the KO, but is able to put the core into a favorable position, finding that first barrier. There's the second, there's the KO, and last call are popping off again. Lumost waiting in the goal, waiting in Obscure Bread's face, has access to the flip, has access to everything he can possibly need to be able to put it in the goal, and there it goes at a KO on top of it. Yeah, we do get to see some stagger come out for... Uh, for Gramella at least, with his peak performance, a little bit of size for 3Z Breezy, but it's just not enough. Like, Frightfully Fresh is making the word Deadeye, uh, or he's using this uh, this awakening to the true sense of the word, hitting so many primaries and triple takes here. Uh, already we see someone get, that's 3Z Breezy being taken out. A little bit of a bigger hitbox also means that he's easier to hit here. The size doing a little bit of a favor to last call uh, in this situation here, and we are in a position where Lumos is ready to score once again. Yeah, making so much happen off of these power plays and looking to finish one off yet again here. Goal already opened up. Grimella back on the map. Freezy going to be available as well. But Grimella going to get taken down nearly as quickly as they were able to get out here in the first place. Frightfully fresh. Just sitting pretty on the other side. Firing off shots wherever they can find them and trying to keep people off of the map and unable to defend. And there's going to be the goal cross map from Hook Resets as it just slowly travels over the top corner and nobody can get past Lumos. It's got to feel so bad if you're Sundubu Strikers right now. Half the time you're trying to play League of Legends essentially and just dodge these skill shots and abilities coming through. Uh, and you don't even get a chance to participate in the game of Omega Strikers. Uh, but that's... Yeah, that's that's the comp difference right now. It looks like they had a little bit of a good read, but nice. Finally, a little bit of a break for Sindubu Strikers getting the getting the McDouble here to to get both barriers. But the steam is not stopping for last call. <laughs> they're pushing forward. Uh, they're trying to find the KO and the second barrier opportunity here at the same time. Yeah, not slowing down one bit. They've got themselves one barrier already, but you got to watch out for 3Z Breezy going for the breakaway, trying to get a score off, but Frightfully Fresh is able to keep the defense alive. <laughs> Lumos now looking to take over on the bottom side, trying to sneak it past him once again. 3Z Breezy, another scoring opportunity here, knocked aside by Lumos, and Lumos has to keep it on the offense. You cannot let this get over to the left side of the map. Could it be a potential score given up the Finny? It's going to have her work cut out for her at that point. Lumos now moving forward, gets the flip, gets the barrier, gets the shot. Can't get it past the two remaining defenders, but Hook resets, keeping up the aggression, has the lock and load, gets it down to Lumos, down into the goal, and another set comes through for last call. Great redirect from Lumos to get that bottom pocket of the goal. Uh, and now it is 3-1 in this set, 2-0 in sets. Or last call here. Once again, Frightfully Fresh up front uh, in this draft has so many things to take. It's going to take the missile props just for even more damage. Uh, and then also gets to deny uh, gets, gets to deny Gramella from a Gramella opting for the Spark of Resilience also had Big Fish as an option if he wanted some, uh, some more stagger. Uh, but... It's looking pretty good. We get Egoist come out for hook resets and the 
Ice Edge, or Lumos. Really great selections coming on through here. That Knife's Edge, very, very dangerous in the hands of Lumos. He has already racked up quite a number of KOs in this game, number two, and that can only make that number go higher. Breezy Breezy going to be able to find themselves a nice little barrier there and actually an opportunity to be aggressive here for Sudubu Strikers as a whole squad, something they haven't had looks like for all of game number three but they're gonna lose it just as fast as it came they are gonna be able to open on up the goal and a dash punch from 3z breezy pushes it in finally sudubu strikers get to put themselves a little bit of a play together a little bit of life coming back in for for sudubu strikers here it's nice that 3z breezy who was last pick there managed to get big fish which not only gives them a little bit more size uh, on this night market helping to get a little bit secures or more hitbox range but also the the additional stagger that he so desperately needed. Definitely here, and there's going to be one barrier, there's going to be two barriers. Lumos puts it together and gets both, but 3Z Breezy responds in turn and is able to take one off the top side, getting a little bit of a power play for the side of the Sudubu Strikers and not letting up the Flame Flurry, trying to push it in to the remaining barrier, but Gramella is there to catch it back on up. Hook resets now back available onto the map and going to get it down towards Lumos. Obscure Breads trying to clear it back out. 3Z Breezy with another little breakaway on the dash punch, going to be able to open up the goal and looking to put it in for a second goal. 3z breezy at the last possible moment coming alive oh it might be similar to what happened in game one and dubu strikers making a comeback 3z breezy was down in so many levels as well so finally has a little bit more hp in him a little bit more stagger uh to make these plays and it's been so long since we've seen them dash punch the core into their uh barrier but Adapting quick, last call takes out 3Z Breezy, and now you have an opportunity to, to get this comeback for last call here. Lumos in a position to break that final barrier, but no, great shot from Obscure Breads on the clear. Uh, gets a barrier of his own here, but 3Z Breezy uh, trying to defend, but it is Lumos not letting up. Gets the final barrier with the flip and scores through all three opponents of Sundubu Strikers. Really good stuff there from Lumos. Stuns all three with the flip, flips the core, puts it in the goal and is going to look to try to close this one out as cleanly as they can. Last call could take the whole series with a set win here, but they need two more goals to do it, and they cannot give up a single one to the Sudubu Strikers. There's going to be the shot still coming through rightfully fresh, knocking aside Gramella, capturing it with the big finish, and setting up for their forwards to be able to move on for that follow-up play. Hook resets, rushing towards the bottom, goes for the flip, does not find it, and now 3 Breezy again, well set up to be able to try to make the dash punch play happen. It's cleared back away by Fright Fully fresh, but returns with Gramella in tow. Gramella trying to keep up that aggression on the other side, but gets hit by the triple take and now has to be very careful with that debuff. 3Z Breezy trying to distract on the other side, but losing quite a bit of their stagger for it. Gramella goes in for the flip, looking for the shot, opens up the goal as there's going to be 3Z Breezy taking incredibly low over on the other side. Not going to be able to find too much action here, but that's not going to stop them from trying as they launch themselves forward for another attempted shot on goal. Another dash punch, still not able to find it but it's Gramella who puts it in wow 3z breezy's getting knocked around yeah while they're able to stay alive some duper strikers is making the plays 3z breezy not getting taken out there but absorbing a lot of the impact uh, and a lot of the pressure giving obscure breads and Gramella time to at least make uh to move forward and make these plays he's doing a great job of converting himself as well it's one two punch here on the Juliet. great pickup for him but I think team player might end up going over to uh, frankly fresh which is a scary awakening to uh to let a goalie have all right looking for a little bit of comeback potential here the one two punch going to be very useful for the julie as well bring themselves some nice powerful options what is going to be a big attempted comeback here from the sundubu strikers lumost running out of that arc to get things started here gramella Want to see what they can make happen, but a nice little breakaway on the bottom from Hook Reset's going to be able to find themselves the first barrier of set number four, and Hook Reset's not looking to let up. They maintain control and try to push it past Gramella, but 3Z Breezy finding a little bit of an angle for themselves, going to be able to find one of the barriers, but frankly, Fresh going to take them right off the map. Six KO streak coming in from Fresh. They had the advantage here, but Gramella doing a great job of holding it down himself. Almost reminds me of Kainub on that first series uh, of just... 1v2 get the barrier and put yourself in a position to score great hold to, to kind of reverse that power play and now we have almost two oh my god there it is the molten bolt that we saw in game one on atlas lab just a snipe 
A little bit of dead eye action himself doesn't need the awakening though. Dramella coming back alive here, showing some more of what we saw at the beginning of game number one. And they're going to need that coming out of this Drakkar to be able to come back in this game and in this series. Gramella not letting up here, going to be able to find themselves a barrier once again, looking for a second one, flip forced out of Frightfully Fresh. Scarebred's able to keep up the defense, but does lose a barrier in their own right. Lumos is not done yet in the Maximus and wants to be able to push it forward for more. Hook resets, waiting at midfield. Breezy Breezy finds themselves staggered, taken low, triple taken as well, and nearly gets taken off the board by that misdirection, but not quite going to be able to take down yet until Frightfully Fresh gets the job done. Going to be a power play available for last call here as they go in for the flip. They get the second barrier. Lumos looking to dash in for the last shot. All three on the offense here as Fightfully Fresh approaches the midfield. Hook resets, not going to be able to find a angle to get it over towards Lumos, who does have access to the flip, but it will get stuffed away. All three members ready to receive, but Lumos finds the one path. Hook resets and Lumos combine to get it through all three members. Great passing between Hook resets and Lumos. A lot of pressure over there. Almost able to hold it down for Sindubu Strikers, but the, the points themselves are looking way closer now. So I finally feel like we have a game, but just as I say that, both barriers being taken, uh, just not fast enough for Fresh to reach it in time. Breezy Breezy looking a little bit low, and again, the steam roll does not stop, or the engine does not stop. Uh, they do not care that the barriers are gone, they will just keep going forward. 3 Breezy being taken out, and now in a position to, to turn this around, get a barrier of themselves, and try to finish this point off before 3 Breezy can come back. Yeah, great job on Obscure Breads using the range of the Mako to be able to keep things cleared away and to keep Frightfully Fresh having to play defense, not able to step too far out, not able to help out with that aggressive play. Lumos has access to that core flip. KO is found, though. He's going to have to put it in right here, right now, or he's going to have to deal with a power play, and here it is. 3Z Breezy going to try to find the scoring here, and the flip is too early. 3Z Breezy scores another one for the Sudubu Strikers. Good attempt from Fresh, just a little bit off on the energy burst there, is not able to catch the, uh, not able to catch the elusive, or sorry, not able to catch the core uh, with the burst itself. 3Z Breezy getting a great point there, giving them the advantage in this set 2-1 right now, and looking, looking pretty good. Uh, in terms of where they are standing, finally, we can see that they are not getting staggered and KO'd immediately, uh, and just as that happened in the last game, uh, the team that was getting KO'd and then eventually stopped uh, came back. Yeah, and looking like it might be that once again here as Sudubu Strikers trying to turn the tables. One more goal, and we'll be going to set number five. What will they be able to put together here? Lumos just trying to punch away at 3Z Breezy here and keep them off the map, keep them out of the play. Scarebreads has so many resources, so many defensive tools on this Mako to be able to keep it up as access to the core flip as needed. There's going to be a nice save there off the big finish found by Frightfully Fresh, but they're going to be able to keep up the offense one way or the other, and they are going to be able to find themselves a first goal barrier. Lumos waiting on the bottom, just destroyed by 3Z Breezy, who comes out with a big combo, but now able to return it using that X Maximus, trying to keep the health bars low, trying to keep space for hook resets to be able to find that top barrier, not able to put it together yet, and 3Z Breezy once again finding themselves face to face with Frightfully Fresh, not quite able to push it in for the barrier, but able to build themselves up a power play one way or the other as hook resets will clear it back to the right. Good patience on hook resets. I like that he flipped and just chose not to do anything about it to give as much time uh, to let Lumos respawn here. And now Lumos trying to fight back, is able to take out 3Z Breezy, and now we have this opportunity for Last Call to even up this set here. But great defense between Grimella and Obscure Breads. The core is just not going into this barrier. They're holding it down so well. Yeah, the Mako goalie really paying off huge here. I do believe that was the ensnare drums thrown out, not gonna be able to find its way onto any targets. And 3Z Breezy with a big flurry. Not able to find that barrier either. The defense has been so crucial as we get into overtime here. And Lumos still can't push it in. Flip away from Gramella to be able to keep Obscure Breads on the safety side. And now going to be able to open it up for the side of Sudubu Strikers looking to take themselves to set number five. There's the opening found by Lumos on towards the right. Gramella and Hook resets brawling with their lock and loads trying to get one past the other. 3Z Breezy looking for an angle on the top side. Lumos on towards the right. Lumos gets a one-on-one one with Obscure Breads. There's the flip from Hook resets, but nobody can get it past Obscure Breads. Lumos wants some more in the Maximus. Can't get the core into his hands. Can the rest of his team. Hook resets, receives it midfield, punches 
cruise it past Obscure Breads and takes us to round number five in the set. 2-2 two, two in the set. We saw how crazy the core moves with overtime plus hotshot is so hard to keep track of. And you just end up in these small interactions where if you lose a single strike war or a single defense, uh, you will not get another opportunity to recover from that. Uh, but now we are 2-2. Two, two, uh, and what could potentially be the series point here if Sundubu Strikers do not turn it around. But starting off this particular point, pretty strong. 3 3 no, uh, uses the... Uh, uses the energy burst, doesn't need it though, oh. able to get both barriers himself and is now in a position to score. Grimella coming through, trying to get in the core. And 3 3 3 just trying to sit there, using all of his abilities, not able to convert here. And it is comeback time for last call. Lumos is back up and they got it. They have to turn this around right now. Otherwise, it's going into a final set and something like Demolitionist is going to be going over to 3 z Breezy and you do not want that happening. It could all come down to this. Lumos looking to push over on towards the other side. They've lost their barriers, but that does not mean they are out of this set yet. Lumos has access to the flip, going to use it there, but can't put together an angle to shoot towards the goal. They're nearly going to be able to take down the Julie, and they will do so. A power play available for last call to try to close out this series here and now. Hook resets, has access to the core flip, slipped back away by Obscure Brent. Hook resets, puts it in again. They're going to be able to open on up the goal. Who is going to be able able to find it. Lumos dashes forward and Lumos will close it out for last call. Sundubu strikers will go down 0-1 to one to start off the NASL. The bull rush to get rid of the Mako saying this character will not have a 100% win rate anymore. Last call without Borg on their team able to take 2-0 over Sundubu strikers in this series. Amazing performance. Such a great run there from the side of Last Call. From being down 2-0 in sets in game number one to being able to sweep the series 2-0 in games. What a massive comeback that they were able to put together for themselves here. And without Borg available as well, this might be a team to keep your eyes on as we get into this next season. I was, I was mentioning it early on that when... That that second set of reviews came in and people were rating uh, the other teams. Last call was high up there compared to the initial rankings. Uh, and then Sindubu Strikers fell down quite a bit. So these two specific teams, I wanted to keep an eye out. Uh, and it just goes to show that we have a crazy series or we have a crazy NASL season ahead of us. Oh yeah, this is going to be a real, real fun one. And I, I love to see that, you know, we got two closer games here, even in the game that wasn't supposed to be close. We got Oshino Core Flip. Coming on up to be able to take it down uh, Demon's Raw, at least in some uh, in some sets and in a game. And uh, a nice series between the Sudubu Strikers and Last Call. So good stuff. The first win to one of our new teams. Congrats to Last Call here. And that's going to do it for Mystic and I's section of the broadcast. We are going to throw it to a quick break here while we get ready for the next round of matches. But uh, that's going to do it for us. And we will see you guys next time. All right. See you, everyone.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the North American Strikers League. My name is Tech, and of course, I'm joined here by Spooked Alter. Spooked Alter, how are you doing tonight? I am doing great, and I'm looking forward to this first game. Uh, I believe we are actually going to be seeing Core Overflow versus Bun Bun Bonanza on the Inky's Splash Zone first game, which is uh, crazy to say the least. Yeah, not a map I was expecting to be played first between uh, <laughs> these two teams, but I don't know. Maybe there's some hidden tech. Uh, ignore my background. I, I'm a big fan of the map. I'm just storing them over there just for a little bit. Uh, but we will be hopping into this first match. Slop, the Joker, and Leo Leon versus Lulibun, Liari, and Scyther. Yeah, and it seems straight out the gate we're going to be seeing Core Overflow banning out the Mako. Uh, yeah, definitely a strong pick this season. Uh, ever since she was released, I believe, she's just been dominating the field. And then there's the Joker targeted on the Octavia ban as well. Both yeah. of Fair enough. I mean, I've played against the Joker on Octavia. Uh, did I win? No, I got a good little minus whatever the number was. Probably something pretty <laughs> high. Uh, but... Yeah, this is gonna be an exciting match. Inky Splash Zone, a lot of sort of creation characters just down to make things as annoying as possible with that single barrier. Uh, and look at all the matching profiles, beautiful. Oh yeah, their team is definitely synchronized and hopefully they'll be able to bring out that synchronization to their plays here. We'll see some amazing uh, coordination and teamwork. Yeah, and speaking of coordination, the entire lobby is actually opted for Egoist, so we don't even know what the second awakening was, but Egoist start going to be a huge thing, especially as you move later on into these sets, and Billy Bun doing a good job there. Using that eject button Juno, Cakes would not be happy about that one. No, he would not. He would actively uh, tell her to take something else, but Billy Bun is so far using that eject button to almost get an instant goal after that barrier break, but... And this map's funny because you get that special button, but it has been reworked since it was originally uh, shown as the turret is now a lot weaker. 
and it's a lot easier to get out of and it takes longer to kill you so it's a not as strong as it once was which is good to see it also makes the core slower so you can't just like sit in that one corner and immediately get gold so it's definitely a nicer map in my opinion now I agree. And speaking of the nicer map, Lihari and Lilybun immediately taken off the map as the Joker is able to just put that one in. But the mobility from both of these teams are so important, especially on their goalies. So something to look out for. We're going to see Slop and Lilybun absolutely flying across the map right now. Yeah, and one thing I would also like to point out here is the uh, Rasmus Mirror on the forward. It's definitely a strong character on this map because of that hook potential you have and also just the ground it covers and just how open it is makes it a lot nicer as your main forward than someone that would be more like X where he's kind of stuck in place, doesn't have that mobility or range to really get where he needs to. But it seems that their goalie is gone and it might be able to score off of this one right here. We see the core flip into the kill, into the goal. Yeah, the double KO coming out there. We saw Scyther also, or uh, Leon rather, making the fake when the core was inside of that blast, able to end up KOing Lilybun, who's just expecting him to shoot in the bottom corner. So a nice little outplay from there as we move into this. And already core overflow is up 2-0 in this first set. Yeah, and the first set's a good one to get, especially when you're all matching characters like this, the way we're seeing uh, the Rasmuses, because whoever gets that size first is definitely going to be looking good. And speaking of that, Leo Leon putting it in, maybe getting MVP here. Looks like it will be the case. And if there's size, then hey, he beats, he wins the mirror matchup. Absolutely. And there it is. Leo Leon, the MVP of that set, credited with that, will get first pick. And look at these awakenings. For characters like Luna, Estelle, uh, and even Juno, these are some insane ones. We see Twin Drive, Chrono Boost, and Aerials all being uh, in here for movement. Also extra special, of course. A big one for stuffing the core. Any, uh, any other interesting ones here? I mean, I think... Aerials going on to Juno there is just so tough because you want to deny Twin Drive, but they also have Aerials. And then you also now have the Rasmus that has Chrono Boost, which makes the speed last so much longer. And especially a map like this, you like to have that speed and you like to have that speed be faster and just the duration of it be more. So overall, it's tough getting put into that spot, but they still are ahead in sets. So it's not the end of the world. I think draft wise, Lilybun definitely got something that they will uh, make use of that Ariel's being able to go help their forwards here. We're seeing Liari trying to get it in and there's Lilybun unfortunately not quite able to get it there. So we're going to see a little bit of the play from Slob pushing forward, being able to keep that pressure up. But Scyther is able to get a nice hook. Pendulum, nope, doesn't connect here. And we're going to be seeing Lilybun actually moving forward with that Ariel's making just the plays that you're able to make with that extra dash range. Yeah, huge save by the Joker, and now the pressure is this uh, the other way now, and Leon somehow just finds the angle right as the gate is opening, shoots it up in that top corner, and one thing about Inkies, it's so momentum-based, and things can change in the drop of a hat, as we saw happen there. Immediately one KO, and you lose your goal just like that, and now we're off to another kickoff. Core Overflow is looking solid right now, and Bun Bun Bonanza is going to have to do a a lot if they want to come back from this yeah i mean we're seeing that they're able to keep the uh pressure up on the side of bun bun bonanza but they're not able to get it in and as soon as the pressure shifts the core overflow is just immediately able to capitalize and score so it's really a battle of attrition for them uh for the side of core overflow and it's just a challenge of for bun bun bonanza if they can actually you know uh finish it out here which they're trying desperately to do but now we're seeing the pressure shift and immediately there's the barrier there's the goal on Joker. Yeah, these are some insane counter attacks and made even better considering uh, Joker has heavy impact. So that little Crystal Thorn is going to hurt you a little bit more. Just those stuns make things so difficult. But, you know, if you look on paper right now, Bun Bun Bonanza has so many things, so many creations, so many abilities that make it that much harder for Slop. So the fact that they're able to lock down these barriers and lock down that massive goal once the barrier finally goes down is super impressive. The Joker here just dribbling in the corner and somehow Scyther finds the bottom side of that barrier and look at all three players stuck in the bottom. Lilybun with the core flip immediately shoots the top corner and things might be shifting in their favor if they can keep doing plays like that. Yeah, getting, you know, maximum value out of that Ariel's pick. Really nice to see here. Uh, it's also going to help for things like kickoff, as we're seeing just that pressure from just the slimes overall. And there it is. Scyther's able to put it in, has the ego with speed, is keeping it forward, and boom, gets the goal. And all of a sudden, we are on set point for both teams here.
And uh, this would be a nice point to grab for the side of Bun Bun Bonanza because the likelihood of there being size is way higher because there was none in the last draft. And you still can get some amazing things on now like Manu and uh, Timeless just uncontested really. Yeah, Timeless would be a big one. These size awakenings would make the world of a difference. As Joker just stuffs it through Lilybun in the corner here. Somehow, Slop is making it work, holding down this barrier for as long as they can. There's the blast. Leon looking to shoot it in the bottom, but not able to find it. And now it's difficult with these Juno blobs sitting in the corner. The Joker, patient as patient can be, just waiting. And here comes Lilybun on the aggressive. A nice block there from Scyther to stop Slop from dashing all the way in. Leo Leon flips it point blank. And another K off the bottom doesn't even matter. Leo Leon stuffs it through for another set from Core Overflow. Yeah, that was definitely a good set to grab from them. I mean, because they're almost about a win here. But also the fact that they have two size awakenings and both Rasmuses are back to back and there's only really one person that can deny it and I don't think Juno really wants the size here but it does seem that Joker's gonna opt for that demolitionist and we might be seeing yep there it is the double deny so that both Rasmuses get nothing but I think getting demo on Estelle is definitely really good. Yeah, and especially with how often we see Joker uh, either taking or assisting those enemy barriers. I mean, although there's only one on Inkies, it's still important to drop those cooldowns, especially against, you know, someone like a Juno who is able to put down their blobs and really stall out time, uh, leaving room for more of those awakenings to come through. But look at this, all three players in that bottom corner, but somehow the core just not making it through as it does end up taking the barrier. Leo Leon almost gets the quick shot in there, but Lilybun was prepared. Once again, the momentum shifting, just sticking in this corner. Finally, it goes down, but there's Slop with the dunk, able to secure the core into the bottom corner. There is nothing Willy Bun can do about that one. Yeah, an excellent play from Slop. He read the clear. He, um, you know, put the pressure up with that the the water gun, the water hose. Uh, so just overall, just well played from Slop there. I mean, showing that the, the Golia eject button mirror is so far, it's looking like the uh, Luna is slightly more uh, impactful here. 100% and here we see the core flip will it amount to anything there's just too much sitting in front and look at this Lilybun over commits a little bit loses the barrier for it and now Slop is in to stun and to secure the goal. Yeah I mean that was just an excellent play from them they're reading them really well here they're able to just deny them and it seems that these guys had to have had like at least three scrims on Inkies. There's no way they're this good without any practice. Yeah, Inky is an interesting map to say the least. And it seems like they clearly have mastered it. Leo Leon dashing through, winning the one versus three to get that strike in. The pass up to Joker. And that's game one of the series. Wow, what an insane round that was. Uh... Honestly, I, w look, as you said there, the demo, the ability is getting reset, uh, Joker assisting on all of those barriers, he definitely was assisting or taking them, which led so much faster into that goal happening, which their team was really good and built on that principle of break barrier and immediately score before they can, uh, you know, regather and reset up their defenses. Yeah, I mean, Inkies can be treated like almost the gimmick map in some ways where kickoffs are so important every single time you know omega strikers doesn't necessarily have a ton of kickoff strategy aside from mix-ups but on this one i mean we saw almost every time uh bun bun bonanza has been able to get it onto the side of core overflow but just not secure that first barrier and against a luna i think that's insane and a testament to just how good slop is and uh how good of assistance the joker and leo are able to provide in that goalie box yeah, and another thing, Slop has five assists, showing that he is yeah. up there with his forwards, able to just help them put it in, get done what needs to be done. To, you know, get those passes with, from a flying Luna is always one of the best feelings as a forward. 100%. You know, as a goalie, I like scoring goals, but it doesn't happen too often. <laughs> you know, Slop able to get one somehow off of just flying in that mobility of the Luna. So a really good showing from them. I think uh, second map actually is Tycho Temple, another interesting one, you know, one of the newer maps. And I'm interested to see what goalie picks we see on that. I know Mako is obviously a huge one uh, as it's the newest striker and potentially one of the strongest goalies out there right now.
Yeah, I mean, we did see a Mako ban, and I would be very confused if they're going to ban it on a Inkies if they wouldn't ban it on Taiko Temple. Mm -hmm. So I'm imagining we won't be able to see that played, and I'm curious if we're going to be seeing... It's either a Mako Mirror or a Mako ban. I think that's the way that the cards are going to unfold here. We're going to have to see, though. Loading in, it seems that... We're on the side of Core Overflow, hovering that Octavia pick on the Joker. Don't know if they'll get it, but Leo Leon's actually going to be opting for a Juno. Interesting. Well, it looks like they're going to be banning Mako. <laughs> we see all three immediately locked into that. So no home court advantage for one of our favorite Onis on Tycho Temple here. But yeah, Octavia ban, that's, uh, that's expected. Definitely expected, definitely uh, just overall what I would expect to see. And now, I, what I didn't expect though was the Juno fake out from Leo Leon. Uh, but we are seeing the uh, tried and true X era. Yep, X era, the set five destroyer as we saw earlier on in this live stream, if you guys were locked into that one, but here we go. Tycho Temple, Core Overflow versus Bun Bun Bonanza. The Bun Buns have to clutch this one up. If they want to stay in this series here. Yeah, I mean, put, getting put into this situation is always tricky because you have to win, but you can't get greedy because then it won't opt for much and you'll just play worse. So we're going to have to see Cypher 12 play excellent here, though, as he already is with that one dash punch kill and almost getting the barrier, but... Slop is just putting on quite the performance, able to hold it down with the assistance from Joker, who is now just already rotated forward. I mean, I don't think we talked about it, but it was an aerial start, so Joker being able to rotate like that, only possible from the Awakening start. Yeah, aerials and spark of strength, two absolutely insane abilities uh, starting off right away. And look at the pressure. Lily Bun jumped up so far, but well, somehow, did Liari shoot that into the net? Yeah, Liari... May have had a MOBA moment on Wazd, but sometimes those happen. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it'd be like that. Uh, moving on, <laughs> we're going to see uh, there's so much pressure immediately off this kickoff when you have to play against the Juno. You know, all those blobs able to do so much. There's a heal coming out from now as a barrier finally does go down. The Joker almost loses their life off the bottom, but not spaced well enough. And ooh, a nice save from Slob, locking it down here. And the good clears from the Joker to get it out of that side, making it that much harder. All three strikers in the net, and there goes the second barrier down immediately. And now Slop in a one versus one with Scyther. Leon passing it up to Liari instead, and the barrier will get taken down. Both goalies right now are essentially sitting naked as Leon has to watch this uh, creation grow. And here we go, the Joker looking for the snipe, not able to find it. Leon shoots it, but the beautiful Juno Blob able to protect the goal. The things are still scary, and the Whoa. jump forward is just not close enough. That blob needs to be a little bit quicker if you want to save that one. Yeah, that, that blob was hit with an ice block or something. He was just unable to get to his destination. And that will put them at set point here. And honestly, being uh, Leo Leon, you're in a nice spot here because uh, Juliet does suffer a little bit on these corners, unlike X does. Uh, so you're in a position where you don't have to worry too much about your, like protecting on defense from Scyther, but you still have to watch out for the dash punches, which are definitely a lot stronger on a map like this because you can get the weird bounces off the you know the bongos where you're somewhere you didn't know you would be, and then and then you mm -hmm. you find yourself KO'd off the map for a little bit. But it seems instead we're going to be seeing the scoring attempt trying to come out. There's the redirect. Lilian trying to get the core. Can't quite get it. There's Scyther 12 pushing up with that core flip. He wants to get the ball here. Will he be able to find it? We're seeing the pass from Liari. Not able to get through quite right to Joker into the beam, but it's going to be blocked very nicely by Lily. Yeah, good save from Lily there. The blob, not even necessary this time as they just strike it in the air. And now they're sitting on very few abilities. There's so much pressure as Lilian is just striking it back and forth before it's finally cleared. And that arrow speed really working out, making it that much easier for Core Overflow to control the midfield. And there comes the Core Flip coming out from Slop and need to save that one. Lily Bun passing it up and Slop shoots it. Willy with a beautiful save there, somehow making it work. And Scyther hits the Scyther angle in the bottom corner, the bounce up to the middle of the net. Bun Bun Bonanza is on the board. Did you just say a Scyther angle? I don't think I've heard that terminology before. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, after that one, you know, I think they deserve it. That was a beautiful <laughs> shot there in the bottom corner. You can name it whatever you want. Yeah, well, it seems though Scyther is suffering from that Scyther angle where now uh, Leo Leon is going to make sure that he is not able to do anything of the sorts because he is KO'd off the map and now Leo is going to have to core flip, get the ball out of there, but it's going to come right back and now we're going to be seeing Scyther back up trying to get the KO and doesn't quite find it though as they're going to see both barriers down on this map. Yeah, core moving a little bit too fast for Lily to save that barrier, but both sides have one barrier left and somehow Slop and the Joker are winning these strike wars, but not when there's six opponents to shoot against. Leon is on such low HP, but they are moving. They are trying to get that second barrier any way they can. And there we go. It finally falls. Both teams with zero barriers left looking to shoot it, but Leon KO'd off the goalie net. It's right there with the core flip shooting it up at the top. The nice block there from Slop somehow evading the ult from Julie at Joker shoots it off of the bongo into the middle of the net. A beautiful use of those Tycos there. And look at this core overflow takes the first set again, three to one. Wow, that was a excellent shot from Joker. He knew he had the angle. He knew the goalie didn't have eject to go save it. So, or not eject, their secondary, I should say. And he was able to go make that shot possible, especially on this map where you have that extra speed boost from the, uh, the bongos. Yeah, I think, you know what? I think I have to take away Scyther's angle. I think now that's the Joker angle. I'm sorry. I think I think he earned it after that one. There we go. The Among Titans goalie on Juno, actually. Uh, good pick there. Makes the forwards very big. Yeah, and Julia getting a spark of resilience is really good here because you have that spark of strength. And you're that much harder to kill. You do that much more damage, and you can keep scaling with sparks. So definitely a good pickup from Scyther here. Yep, and, you know, interesting draft overall. I think I would have to say that this one definitely favors the side of Core Overflow. And Lilybun trying to make it work as a forward instead gets a little bit too aggressive and loses both barriers for it as a result. It's a difficult spot when you're trying to play from behind when you're down one set and it's either looking for the dash punch. The Joker doing a good job moving it. And this time it works out for Lilybun, able to take that second barrier here. Leon looking and slop with the dunk. The alley-oop into the bottom corner as another goal rolls in for Core Overflow. That was a expert shot from the slop. He was able to navigate the Luna dash that I still have trouble with to this day and able to squeeze right in where Lilybun couldn't actually strike. So definitely an expert play and we're seeing another dash here. Nice pass, but unfortunately it was interrupted. Can't get it quite to Leo here as he has to go get an orb. And now they're on the defense where Joker's going to set up a Maelstrom, trying to make it through. There's Scyther with the core flip, able to get the last barrier now as we're going to be seeing. Finally, the momentum is switching. Will they be able to block it out though? Liari is able to nicely get in there with the core flip from the Ooh. punch to Scyther to fake them out. And that is going to be a goal for Bun Bun Bonanza beautiful chemistry there we saw the punch the core flip into punch is insane the timing on that one absolutely nuts not sure if that was a steal or if that was actually intended but a beautiful play nonetheless makes it 1-1 in this set here and look at this slop so aggressive on that goalie but is able to do it with the eject button Lily Bun trying the same thing but those blobs just not on the same wavelength only able to take the barriers a few times and somehow they're getting out of this one as I cast their curse it one barrier goes down and now the second core overflow putting so much pressure especially with these Luna alts making you run away and the Tycho drums so fast that core is moving so quickly and slop just has to sit on this top corner and lock down this one barrier and here we go scyther doing a good job trying to get it forward and the joker taking their time knows they can be patient here the pass to lily on and a beautiful prediction there from lily bun a good reaction but the joker patient able to shoot it on that bottom corner and 2-1 now in this set Wow, the Joker was able to just expertly hold his strikes right for when he could see that lane open up, get that nice pass, and then also that core flip patience he had to wait out all of those abilities 
just going to show his expert play, but we're going to see he's going to have to pull out even more of that as we're going to find Leo Leon KO'd from the dash punch. Now they're defending. They got one barrier. Will they be able to get the second? Scyther's trying to get it in this corner, but now Leo Leon's back. He X Maximus is immediately to make sure that that ball is going over to the other side with the momentum shifting. They're trying to get it through. There's the Blobos. There's the dash, the punch, the core flip, and now we're finding Slop in a 1v3 situation. Will he be able to defend it? There's the missile to get the ball rolling back. He's dashing forward, trying to make a play, but he can't quite save it from Scyther now. The goal is open. Will they be able to save it? Oh. oh my goodness. Everyone's back and everyone's defending. How is Slop sending it in the same spot every time? And that spot is in his net, but he's not scored on. Here we go. Slop going forward. Scyther doing a good job winning the strike war. And Willy Bun is moving up. There's so many obstacles in the goal. Slop saves it again off the top side of the net. They are putting on a defensive masterclass as Leo Leon takes both of the goal barriers and saves it again. Leo Leon shoots it through. What? Somehow, core overflow claws their way back and is able to take this set. What <laughs> are you doing, Slop? Whoa, that was insane. Slop was able to hit the sword angles when he needed to, win all of his strike wars, use all of his abilities, and only missing like what one dash at the start of that, able to just start and make the momentum slowly shift for his teammates to come back online, soloing entirety of Bun Bun Bonanza. That was insane. I don't even know what else to say. I feel like I just brain overflowed from watching that. <laughs> Slop is the goat of this series for sure, without a doubt. And I can't even look at the draft. I'm still thinking about what just happened. Yeah, I mean, Juno getting that uh, team player is definitely going to make it so that they have more defensive plays, but I am too shell-shocked from that goal. I mean, Slop, he's at it again, already getting a barrier, dashing forward with his team. Is he playing forward or is he playing goalie? It's hard to tell these days. It's very hard to tell. Lilian looking for that angle in the bottom corner again. They've been finding that it's so hard to cover and Lily Bun, it's always scary when you see them dash and all three players on Bun Bun Bonanza just stuck in the net trying to defend against this. I mean, the team player helps out a little bit, but not when the Joker is buffing Lilian over and over again. Here we go. We see the Luna ult coming out. Making it that much harder for Scyther to play forward taking a lot of damage does have the core flip and a nice save there from Lily Bun as uh this time it's the Joker who will go down instead of Leo Leon oh but oh, oh. where's Lily Bun <laughs> from the grave somehow managing to save that and Leo Leon just dribbling in front of the net taunting almost as the core flip KO comes out Leo Leon shoots it top corner easy goal for them that was insane. They did use two core flips for that, but I think it was worth it as you're pressuring on to this next point here. You only need two more away from closing out this series. They've all been playing expertly and they've all had their time to shine. I mean, we're just waiting now to see if Leo Leon right here with the X Maximus can stuff it through. They're actually going to be able to hold it out though. The RA not giving up. Maybe they'll be able to make the reverse sweep here. Definitely trying Ooh. for it, but with a nice angle, we're going to see that barrier drop. And now Slop is in there trying to get it in. Will they be able to know the three point defense actually isn't enough as Leo Leon's able to scrape it through, get that corner shot. And now we are on match point or series point, should I say? Gore Overflow is able to find the smallest crack in the defense of Bun Bun Bonanza over and over again. We've seen Leo Leon and the Joker just slotting it in the bottom corners uh, repetitively. It's insane how they're able to find these such tiny opportunities to be able to score. And I think, uh, you know, Slop doesn't seem like he has any cracks in his defense over and over. We see them saving things that shouldn't be able to be saved. And as I say that, there's a little crack as Lily Bun goes a little bit too far and loses a barrier for it. Make that too, as the Joker and Leo Leon doing a lot of work on this offense here. Lily Bun's up trying to 1v1, but there's only so much you can do here. The Joker does have core flip and Leo Leon's building towards it. Does end up burning it as the core flip comes out defensively from Scyther. There's the offense, almost the snipe by Liari. That one surely would have secured it. Slop using the stun and once again, Leo Leon stuffs it in the top corner. Core overflow, take the series two to zero. Wow, I mean, 
I don't even know what to say there other than definitely a well-earned slop victory. He played out of his mind on the defense, on the offense, on assisting midfield, on applying damage. I mean, this man just did it all. I mean, he made sure that even with three people against just him, they couldn't even score on that. So that is just insane. Definitely well played. Yeah, I mean, the only thing slop didn't do is use WASD and kill people. I mean, that's about <laughs> it. Everything else, I feel like that was just slob performing out of their mind, able to lock down so many goals. We see 61 saves there on slob for a relatively quick game. So solid work from them and what a ridiculous showing from Core Overflow. Yeah, that was honestly a very insane Tycho Temple game. I thought maybe they just got some Inkies practice, but maybe they just have gotten some insane practice as a team. I mean, they were able to just hold it down in the harshest of uh, situations and they're able to just convert and make any play happen and that was just honestly some nice omega strikers 100 percent if uh you know if you go and queue into your rank game and you pick luna just know that it might take a little bit more <laughs> to be able to play like slop because when i play luna like that it's in my net instantly I, I don't know how you're even able to do that i felt like slop had Mako abilities and Dubu abilities and Luna abilities to be able to lock that down. I don't know. That's the power of striking the core right there. Uh, but we're going to have some another good series coming up. I'm trying to remember the name here as I navigate through my 50 million tabs. The next one will be Sad Boys versus Quest Esports. So we're going to hop into a quick break and we'll be back with that one. Stay tuned and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Yeah.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the North American Strikers League. My name is Tech, once again, back here with Spooked Alter. I know you had a few things to say about that last series, or maybe a lot of them. If you wanted to yap, uh, you can go ahead. Now's your chance. <laughs> I mean, we can. We could sit here for a while and talk about the excellent gameplay from both sides, the uh, cakes you know, maybe I've influenced me a little bit to want to say Eject isn't good on Juno, but I will keep that for another time because I think we should talk about maybe the next game coming up, which is definitely an exciting one, as we are going to be having the Sad Boys with, I believe, their uh, normal roster being Bells, Vaughn, and uh, You Already Lose, y'all, yep. uh, followed with uh, Quest Esports, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's correct. And Quest Esports, I believe, do have a substitute uh, in replacement of Switch SSB. Uh, so it'll be Hamster Quest, Toasty Local, and Vega, I believe, if I'm correct. We'll see here uh, in a little bit. But yeah, this is going to be an exciting match. Definitely some heavy hitters in this lobby. So if you thought the last one was exciting, uh, this one will definitely live up to your expectations. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll be able to see some uh a great you know series here i'm curious what maps we're going to be going to because we know that the sad boys love themselves that at lab they love themselves some night market and they can play realistically anything but they really don't like inkies as far as my knowledge goes so <laughs> they just like me know. for real <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be hype. I mean, I know uh, we saw a few people in the chat earlier from Sad Boys, you know, watching it, maybe learning, maybe studying up on what they have to do if they want to beat Quest Esports. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is going to be a heavy hitter match. I think, you know, if you play Omega Strikers, you recognize a lot of these names, uh, especially, you know, them being in the NASL season three, week one, you know, the vibes. Yeah, I mean, the vibes are good here. We've had some insane games. I mean, if you're a goalie, things are looking especially up after what Slop just pulled off. So hopefully we'll be able to see some excellent uh, core striking, per se. Uh, hopefully y'all has to hold it down against Quest Esports. They've been very good so far with a lot of different uh, teams and, like, comps. So hopefully we'll, we're going to be able to see that. Hopefully, I mean, I'm imagining we're going to either see a Mako duo or a Mako ban. I mean, something's up with this Mako character. I think I think something's up with that character, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we see it so often. I feel like every game that you play has a Mako in it. It's just, it's so good. You just activate your secondary and just, it's a force field to get away from me. I mean, it's not just a get away from me. It's also, hey, go score forwards. Go, go do your job <laughs> as it gives them that spies and that, and that speed. It just, it's so good. It is very good. Well, we'll be hopping in soon. We're just getting a few of the members back in their lobby. But some good matches today, mainly two O's. We did see it two to one. You know, let's write the script a little bit. What do you think this is going to be, Spooked Alter? What What do you think the score is going to be? I'm going to guess a 2-0 for Outside. Sad Boys. I have to. I don't know. They make me sad, but I have to. It's a It's a difficult decision. What about you? I mean, I mean, realistically speaking, I would have to agree with you, but you know, I would rather believe in the magic of the uh, one two upset from you know Quest here. Ooh, That's, I want, okay. I want I, I like to live in the magic, the moments per se. <laughs> Maybe they'll start the movement, the motion, get it going, and they'll be able to make this place happen. I mean, you never know if they are able to pull out some new trick we've never seen before, some new comp that is definitely like taboo or strange and they're able to make it work that would definitely get me excited you know what i'll do it i'll bet all my bestie points onto quest Ooh, okay yeah i mean the odds are looking a little bit favored towards uh sad boys you know 96 come on we got to get those quest numbers up we got to get that percentage up quest is gonna win it big you heard it here from spooked altar first um <laughs> yeah bet your bestie points I mean, in my in my head can, and I'm hoping that it goes. Uh, they lose the first game, and then the second game they claw out from the jaws of defeat a reverse sweep, and then the next game they just dominate, and it's just a uh, it's a quest, uh, it's a quest gap, you know? Yeah, I can see it happening. Questy in slot, you know? Hamster quest, he's gonna lock it down. Will he play Dubu? Is the question. I mean, he has will the Dubu profile Dubu? picture in lobby. Ooh, will they ban Dubu? 
That would be I mean, devastating for Dubu enjoyers everywhere. Yeah, Bertram would not be happy with that. But then you get to play Mako, and it's like, well, now you have to deal with now you have to deal with that on both sides, realistically. Yeah, I I am not sure. Do we have our maps in? We can see in a little bit. I believe the first map is Night Market. I might be lying because that's what it says in the lobby, but um, we'll confirm that in a second here. You know, Night Market, we see so often the Era X combo on there. You know, Era's, uh, or not the X's Kittens comp entirely, unless we have a Feeny, but we might see that. Um, any Anything you're thinking of that these teams might do differently, maybe? Or are we all slaves to the meta that Audi has created? I think we're all going to be going with the meta of Era X Mako, just kidding it up <laughs> playing that comp making your forward feel as pampered as physically possible able to get kills upon instantaneous a uh, debuff and a buff going both ways and but hopefully we don't see that i i, I want to see just some random like throw in an atlas forward you know get in there Ooh, i like that i like the mix up i want to see uh oh man who's probably the worst striker on night market Ooh. The worst what do you think? is Dubu. F no, Dubu forward is good. Well, is good, maybe that's not the best, but it's not the worst either. <laughs> comparatively, I would say, I don't know, that's really tough because there's a lot of picks that are not optimally seen. I would say the worst pick would probably be Kazan goalie, but I know there's a <laughs> lot of Kazan goalie enjoyers and believers. I'm just not one of them, at least I not feel on that like... I feel like you could make it work somehow. I mean, we see it a lot on like the maps like Oni Village and, uh, you know, Inky Splash Zone, where it's a giant diagonal triangle able to sit in the corner. Uh, you know, once you lose a barrier, it's kind of like that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just a hard thing. You do have a lot of abilities and a lot of different strikes, but I, I don't know. It's just tough to see, tough to say. We'll have to see what they're playing. I don't think we're going to be seeing a... Kazan goalie on either side here. <laughs> I mean, so, it's worth a shot. Yeah, if you have an idea, put put your worst one in chat. I mean, we see Julie go uh, Julie goalie. Yeah, that's pretty sick. That's good. Hey, but you you take pauldrons, you can get one or two clears, and you're you're golden. You have the dash punch too. You can kill people sometimes. Eject X. Ooh, I'm liking that. I like the Superman X goalie on Night Market. That's that's iconic. It is definitely iconic. It's also it's also a good mix up. <laughs> Jedi eject X. I mean, hey, the damage is crazy on that. Yeah, even like monumentalist X, you know, where it doesn't even do anything. That's sick. That'd yeah, I mean, maybe maybe we'll see one of the goalies pull out the Kai with the monumentalist and the timeless creator. I mean, that's always a treat. <laughs> that would be hype. But, I mean, I think both the teams are in the lobby right now. They're just vibing. They're figuring stuff out. They're playing in their strats right now. They're writing it down. Probably just to make sure we know. map banning, I would imagine. Mm. Yeah, that's something they do, right? Which means we might not be on that night market, as you said. But definitely might be in the best of three. I'm curious on the first map, because if we end up seeing a Atlab first, that means we're going to have a lot of different and interesting map choices next, like the Tycho or the Inkies even, but I, I definitely think that's banned. Like, yeah. immediately. I would hope, uh, as my set implies here. Um, but yeah, I mean, Night Market as a first map, I feel like just Era X, we see it every time. And if you're able to win that first one, it's such a momentum swing, kind of, for the whole tournament. Like, you have to stay absolutely locked in if you want to keep winning. And it's one of those mentalities where you're always playing from behind because you know you're down a game. Uh, and so you have to be a little bit more risky. You have to... Think of what you can do that's outside the box and think about how to outplay these people and you know your nerves a little bit higher every time you play with Let's each see. point scored yeah exactly i mean hopefully we'll be able to get started soon i believe they are going to be uh getting started soon here i would imagine i'm gonna see let me do a quick check here to see if we know the maps We'll do some chatting. We'll do some chatting backstage. Yeah, I just want to know where are we going to be going? What we'll be seeing here? I mean, what realistically, what do you think are going to be the three maps we play for this series? What are your guess? Ooh, I'm thinking vanilla. I'm thinking Night Market. I'm thinking Atlas Lab. And then maybe like Oni Village, surely, right? 
Well, I mean, we got information that the first game is Night Market, but then we're going Tycho, and then after that, we're going Clarion. So Ooh. definitely, definitely not OG. Definitely more of the new, other than that Night Market intro game. But other than that, we're looking at the two newest maps. Yeah, I mean, these are some fun maps. I and mean, when we see Tycho, there's so, like, the ability for outplaying on that one is insane. Because, I mean, you can literally throw it off a drum that hits it faster, right? Like, how can you outplay more than that? And, or, you know, you just pull a slop and you just play, like, a regular map and you just shoot it off the corners of your goal consistently. You can do that, too. The sword too. angle. Yeah, the sword angle is pretty good. I mean, if you know when and how to do it. I've tried to sword angle a couple of times, and a couple of times I've owned gold. But sometimes it works, especially when you're better in the goalie role, like Slop. So we'll be seeing hopefully a lot more plays happening. And, I mean, all I want to see is just some more Omega Strikers. So I can't wait to get into it. Hopefully that is relatively soon. We have the maps. So I don't know what we're quite waiting on. Maybe some teams are getting to their PCs. Maybe they ran into some trouble, but hopefully it'll be soon. Yeah, it looks like... Uh... What's it called? Sad boys are fully readied up. They're locked in. Bells and Yao locked in. It looks like we're seeing the other side now from Quest locked in. We'll be hopping here in a second. Uh, no, I don't color my hair. Shaco, so that would be cool. But that's expensive. <laughs> I mean, we have seen everybody readied up, except I guess me and you, but they don't need us to be ready. We've oh, been yeah, ready. Good. And okay. there it is. There's the We're queue. We're in queue. The queue has popped after queuing. This is just like being a West Coast player and trying to find a West game <laughs> and then waiting for the queue to finally pop after we wait on the other players. Night Market, wait, map one. Wait, Jack, are you West Coast? I'm West Coast. I'm in Cali. I did not know that. Okay, fellow Westies. We dominate the cast here, which is why Yeah. Uh, we, we think... Are we things think too high to actually play? So we just cast. <laughs> exactly. Definitely definitely the ping is the problem with me. Definitely. Yeah, no, same. Because, like, that's nothing to do with my reaction time. Yeah, definitely nothing with that. But we are going to be seeing the era band on Nightmare. It makes sense. She definitely enables a lot of different and really strong comps. And there's the Mako that I was assuming. So both buff characters have been banned which means we're not going to be seeing any goalies like that we're not going to be able to see era x definitely going to be a different game and i am all here for it i don't want to see another mako game i want to see so many different games of so many different goalies so many different strikers like drakar mirror and a amy goalie. Ooh, a full mirror actually this is going to be exciting. I mean, we know Yao on the, the IME is in, absolutely insane on Night Market. Like, we see them lock it down. So, this is uh, this is going to be a fun match. Yeah, I mean, uh, Vaughn, who has been definitely a pioneer of the Drakkar in beta, reprising his role on that Drakkar. I mean, I know a thing or two about Drakkar. Knowers know, but hopefully we'll be able to see him put on a better performance than me here. I mean, he is playing it in the midfield slot with Bells on his usual Juliet able to come in here with that speed gate, not quite able to get it as we're seeing Hamster Quest and Vaughn shoot at each other a little bit with their guns, trying to make a play here. Hamster Quest has it though, trying to make a play. There's the glitch bump to stun out. There's the dash punch from Vega though, which is gonna lead to now a little bit of a striker advantage, a power play. Vega can't really get the ball though. Bells is doing an excellent job keeping it delayed here. Yeah, good glitch pop from the IME is actually going to save that one. And now the second barrier goes down. The gate is open and Yao has a lot more to do and deal with from this side. Bell able to get one of his own though. And here's the core flip. Will it be up? No, it'll be down. Somehow sneaks it past the two midfielders and is able to get that into the barrier as Bells just punches it through. Wow, definitely a nice one there from them. I mean, Bells was able to counter a quarter flip like that, just able to bait up the strike right into punch. Yeah, then that's what you got to do if you are sad boys. And look at that KO immediately on the goalie. Vega almost loses their entire life as well as that stagger bar just ticking up. And there's the dunk from Vaughn. The barriers open. The turret is coming out, dealing so much damage to Vega. And Vaughn is just moving around the map, avoiding every ability that comes his way. And Bells almost gets hit into the core there. A little bit too far to take a shot, but the dunk coming out. Hamster Quest forced the core flip as Vega with a self dribble. Not enough to get past. You already lose. 
here we go now things are slowing down just a little bit as bells barely survives up top and is able to get that pass from you already lose some beautiful team play coming out of sad boys and that's something we expect to see in a match like this yeah i mean we are seeing i i believe though the amy on the on the roster there or on the field here is a little bit of a a name off situation not quite sure on that one We'll have to wait to hear back from that, but I, it is still toasty for everyone watching. He is out here playing that Amy role, and they are having a bit of a trouble getting out of Vaughn. And there it goes from Bells, getting that set in. And that is going to be the first set for the Sad Boys. Yeah, first set already. I don't even think we discussed Awakenings there, but I believe it was a Spark of Focus and Missile Propulsion. Uh, but here we go. First set, you already lose. We'll get the MVP followed by Toasty Local. So opting for the one, two, that turret is going to be devastating if you're a forward or midfielder on the side of uh, Quest Esports. Yeah, but right here, as we're seeing Vaughn picking up that heavy impact is excellent on Tricar because you're usually always hitting two things, whether that be the core in a person or two people or whatever else. You're always going to get that heavy impact proc, getting that damage on it. It's also just really nice because it is still an impact at the end of the day. So overall, just a nice pickup from him. A, uh, a best in slot or a bestie in slot, if you will. Oh, good one. And you are dead. Wow, that guy is off the map. You already lose immediately taken out by Vega's dash punch. And now Vaughn and Bells have to lock it down for you already lose. Sitting here in this net. That's not going to help as the glitch pop almost sends it through. Vaughn able to save that one off the bottom. And now Bell's ping ponging it back and forth with the IME just for a little bit as the turret will help pass that forward. And this time it's the glitch pop getting revenge on Vega, taking him off the map. And the beautiful dash from Toasty Local from downtown to stuff the core into the back of the net. Quest Esports ahead for their first time this game in the second set here. Yeah, I mean, Toasty Local being able to pick up that aerials does mean he's able to make those dashes like that, able to make those plays. Just a third forward, which might be just what his team needs to score on the sad boys here, as we're seeing a little bit of trouble getting these barriers, but with that top one being fully blocked off, we're going to be seeing Bells find himself a KO onto Vega with no elusive. And now we're going to see a power play as Vaughn has the core flip. They have the barrier. They're trying to get it through here. There's the ball, though, rolling back as, Ooh. you know, Toasty Local is able to make a play here, but that shotgun and the lineup from Vaughn quite isn't enough. Bells, unfortunately, not able to quite get it, but there it is. Finally, we're seeing a 1-1 on this set. A beautiful redirect from Bells. Just mixes up the timing just a little bit. Puts it out of reach for Toasty Local. And things are tied up here. This time, the kickoff going in favor of Quest Esports. As one barrier goes down, will it be followed by a second, though? We see the turret coming out. You already lose. Uses that core flip. Just keeps things safe. Has to secure that second barrier for as long as they can. So this map is hard not to get scored on just like all the other ones <laughs> but look at how far toasty uh local is up with that core flip uses it to mix it up with the glitch pop able to secure that barrier and off the top of the map toasty local goes again bells is on fire as here comes the power play from all three strikers immediately the barrier goes down and bells able to shoot it bottom corner if you're quest esports you got to stay alive yeah, I mean, as we see there, an excellent play from Bells. He's able to get the KOs. He's able to get the goals. He's able to get the barriers. I think the only thing he really can't do realistically on Juliet is, uh, you know, get the saves. But that's why Yal is there. That's why Vaughn is there. That's why he has his team, the sad boys here, trying to get it out. But it seems that Quest Esports is definitely putting on quite the performance. But there it is. They're able to get it through trying to find this last barrier, though. Vega is definitely lurking for this dash punch on this speed gate. He's following the blueprint. Uh, and then we're going to be seeing here, hopefully, that the momentum is switching. But no! Bells is able to get the KO. And now the power play has been reversed. Vaughn with the core flip trying to get it through. There's the shotgun in his dying breaths. He gets the barrier. Now it's open net on the side of Quest. Open net and maybe open season. Y'all is able to get that core flip. Hits the beautiful angle off the corner to clear that one. A little bit difficult under pressure. And now it's Vaughn and you already lose. Trying to lock it down. Vega has the core flip. Will take the barrier. Hamster Quest looking for that pass up at the turret, denying any opportunity. You already lose. Dashing forward. Has the eject button to go back and save things. 
we go in the corner vega somehow living not taken off the barrier as hamster quest of vega the one two punch into the net a beautiful goal tying up the set two two now and set point i mean two two vega able to hold on for dear life as he's able to then get that goal before his life is taken which is just an excellent performance of knowing where to be what what to do even in those situations where one might want to run away vega says no he gets the kill he gets the goal and now they're in a power play on the side of quest they're getting forward there they are trying to get it through hamster quest gets the ball to him the, there's the ultimate gets the Ooh. barrier will they be able to get the goal now that vaughn's back they're gonna do their best absolute mightiest to stop it bells unfortunately gets evaded on for that dash punch not quite able to get it through but gonna be able to oh no we're gonna see that the pass goes right around him does want to save his core flip maybe for the goal here we're gonna be seeing though y'all pushing up with that glitch pop almost gets it through there's two core flips on the side of sad boys trying to make it happen but it seems that getting this last barrier is just impossible but just as i say that i commentators curse them and now they have two core flips there's the pass there's the core flip and there's the goal yeah two core flips absolutely worth it to take that second set sad boys up 2-0 in terms of sets and you already lose mvp a second time in a row can't be too surprised with uh you know how much impact and how much influence they actually have on this core uh looks like they will be opting for the twin drive a great pick i mean we saw how aggro they're able to be uh and if we talk about aggression even toasty local staying till the absolute last millisecond of that eject button almost every time to just create more and more pressure in the sad boys defense yeah, I mean, we are seeing here the size landing on Vega is nice to see, but Vaughn getting that hot shot just means more cooldown reduction, which means that he is just looking for the ultimate, you know, not a shotgun, but an automatic build for this Drakkar here. Ooh, <laughs> speaking of automatic and Vega making it look easy, taking both the barriers right away and a nice glitch pop from Toasty Local to save things down, but they have to fight against that turret, lose their life for it, but are able to lock down that barrier for just a little bit longer as it finally falls. And now there's Vaughn looking to pass it to Bells. Bells sitting there, but a good defense from Hamster Quest and Toasty Local. And just like that, Hamster Quest is down. Toasty Local gets a good clear, but Vega and Aimi and Toasty Local not able to do enough. There is just too much pressure and too much passing. Bell's credited with that one as they just strike it through the bottom corner there. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely a lot happening. This was looking like a closer game for Quest, but now it seems that they have scaled where now they're just... Out, out, Bell's is just outputting a bunch of damage, and I don't even think he got that much damage awakenings. I guess he has been stacking sparks, unbeknownst to me. And now he is just super strong, able to do a bunch of damage, get the kills, and then Vaughn, who just always has shotgun up, this team just definitely <laughs> knows how to draft better than me. Oh, that is a, that's a Drakkar question mark moment there, but you already lose and Vaughn make up for it. They just wanted to, uh, you know, give a little false hope to the side of Quest Esports there. But it looks like Bells is starting to do his political campaign. He's trying to run for mayor. So we'll see if that ends up happening. I know Vega was able to take one of the sparks away on that first awakening draft, but there's another barrier falling for Quest Esports. As 2-0 right now in the set. This is game point, and Bell's looking to close this one out right away. You already lose up to Vaughn. We'll pass it forward. Toasty Local able to block it. Bell's is in the prime position to receive the pass, and Toasty Local guesses wrong as Bell shoots it in the top sad boys take the first game of the series definitely a good game to get you always want that first game because then you don't have to think oh if i lose this it's over on the taiko game that we're about to go to you get to think if i lose this man whatever we're gonna be tied and i'll clutch it out on clarion so i think though the sad boys don't really uh think about losing in general and i think they're just gonna close it out right here on taiko probably what they're thinking yeah, I think that's what the check mark means is that they're absolutely locked in right now. We saw eight KOs from the side of Sad Boys, only four on the side of Quest Esports coming all from Vega. And 
I mean, Taiko Temple, it feels like a smaller map. I think we see a lot of KOs on that. I'm interested to see if we see uh, a mirror comp again coming out from both these teams or if they're going to switch up their bands and maybe do something new. Maybe one team has a strat that might work better against the other one. Yeah, I mean, one thing I did appreciate from both teams, whether or not they coordinated this, which they probably didn't, but it's my conspiracy, is that they banned Era and that they banned Mako and they didn't play Octavia or now. And that made this game a lot more different than most games played. And I would mm. just like to thank both teams for their sacrifice for doing that. <laughs> because it might lose you that winning edge of not playing the quote-unquote best characters right now or the meta. But it is definitely nice to watch. 100%. It's always fun watching Drakkar matches. They look so dapper in those suits. It's awesome. Shout out Drakkar. Shout out Vaughn and Hamster Quest for, uh, for holding it down for my Drakkar fans out there. Uh, during that map. But Taiko Temple, you know, an interesting map. I'm sure most of these teams have a ton of experience as it's been out for a little bit, but it is the newest one. So maybe as, you know, teams continue playing, we'll find a new meta, we'll find something new. But it seems like the strat is just throw it in the corner and surely it'll hit one of them, right? It's all triangles. They'll bounce around sometime. Yeah, I mean, Taiko Temple is definitely a corner-heavy map, so it definitely emphasizes some creations like Rune, which we have seen from uh, Vaughn show up a little bit more where you get that pillar in that corner and they can't clear it out or Asher even with that path splitter or just the arc beam or you have just so much stuffing ability or even X and other characters like that work really good in that environment because you just have to get it in that corner. You don't have to have the best scoring but tools. You just have to have a lot of big circles. Exactly. And you know, X's circle has no corners, but if it's in the corner, it's scary. So, you know, Big brain. That's the strat. Looks like we'll be queuing up for this match right now as we hop in. Tycho Temple, map two. Uh, Sad Boys up 1 0 against Quest Esports right now. I mean, there's the hover of uh, Mako. Scares me, but we are going to be seeing Dubu hovered on Bells. The Dubu yeah. board on the map is also really good for the same reason Asher's good, because that creation in that corner is very hard to clear and we are seeing an era ban which i appreciate appreciate and celebrate but we're also seeing no ban no which ban. i'm assuming is because they had name off so they got a penalty Ooh. assuming not confirmed just what i'm assuming deserved how dare you do that to us you made me say i me instead of toasty local how dare you <laughs> just kidding looks like we'll see the vice locked in though right away vice i me uh, and Zentaro from the side of Quest Esports, Drakkar, Mako, and Dubu, of course, coming out from Sad Boys. This is going to be an interesting game, and we'll see how this goalie fares on the side of Quest Esports. Yeah, I mean, losing your ban there just basically guarantees that that one's playing Mako. I'm surprised we're not seeing a Mako mirror, but Toasty Local does love the Aimi, which we now see everybody. It is Toasty Local. He has not been a uh you know taken over or someone else it is them they are playing and they are trying their best to defend against this dubu as he's finding himself ko'd actually by hamster who's playing vice with zentaro as their forward so lots of damage in this comp yeah i mean it seems like that's the way to go and it's a little bit unfortunate for bells too you know playing that dubu they have to try to get some awakenings to make themselves larger and get some better stagger if they want to stay alive dubu is just such a huge target for vice and zentaro to just deal an insane amount of damage on and look at that bouncing off the tofu fortress somehow surviving not making it into the net there but you already lose locking it down has to defend against this 1v2 has the core flip already though will make things a lot easier as they move forward and use it to almost kill hamster quest somehow makes it out with one hp there as vaughn is a nice clear to the midfield and will be using up that evasive maneuver bells gets it there but the core flip stopping it in its tracks vaughn just dribbling to themselves as we keep moving on here to overtime yeah i mean we're seeing the core is definitely moving very fast which i don't think we've talked about but on the side of sad boys they have all taken egoist and on the side of quest esports they've all taken extra special so we're seeing what is better happy star or egoist and the first point towards egoist is going to be sad boys with that dubu wall getting that ball with no other option than being scored yeah, I mean, Bells doesn't even need extra special, rubbing it in their face by using the special to score. 
I mean, I think that's a little bit of a flex there. And there's the core flip from Vega. The turret not actually helping out as much as they may have liked. Still able to save that there. But look at the space created by that Vice Ultimate. Hamster Quest able to secure that top barrier right away. And Bell's on one HP just sprinting down the field looking to put it into one of the barriers as they fly around the map. Bomba. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of damage going on, and uh, Bells is finding himself for the second time KO'd here as Dubu. Just, you make yourself such a big target, and everybody wants to get a get a hold of that hamster. Not in the good way sometimes, though, when it's on the opponent's side. Ooh, nice save there from Yuri Lose. Vaughn is locking it down, manages to get the orb, goes invisible for it. A nice little play from them. Somehow, Yuri Lose is saving that. I don't even know how, but there's the core flip coming out. Will it get one barrier? No. Toasty Local on this Imi, locking it down. The turret will save another one, and Hamster Quest assisting in that net, able to save it, but finally one drops as Toasty Local dashes forward. Has to use the core flip there, and it's stuck in the corner. It's stuck in the triangle, and you already lose. Uses that sniper to send it back into the net. Oh, Bells shoots it straight up. That's an interesting strat. Don't think that was intentional, but it seems like they weren't punished for it at least as you already lose. Now playing the midfielder role. We see them do that from time to time. Just creep up and try to score it themselves when they get annoyed of their forwards. And there's the core flip from Bell shooting at bottom corner. Nice shot there. 2-0 from Sad Boys against Quest Esports right now. Yeah, one thing I want to talk about real quick is that Bells is technically using a banned skin. But the Ooh. only rule to that is, is if he uses his primary. So as long as he never uses his primary, he is going to get no punishment at all. So, so far we have <laughs> been zero primaries from him. It seems that they are opting for just winning without that Dubu log. And uh, yeah, I mean, at that point, it's just a, it's a play better, win more situation, which is uh, not this tournament, but it's, it's what it's all about in Omega Strikers. As we're seeing all you need on that Dubu is the uh, the wall, which makes me actually really curious as why he went Egoist over Extra Special when you aren't going to have your primary. You would think you might want the Egoist to have your Corporal up more so you have another scoring option more, but it seems that Bells has opted for instead just scoring with his role like that. He is playing better and winning more and also almost breaking the rules. So, you know, don't look at this guy as your role model. Do the right thing, please. Make it easy for us. And, uh, you know, moving on to this draft, we'll see Mako. Of course, you already lose. Gets that first pick, opting for heavy impact. That's going to be huge denial from Vice. Able to put so much damage out with it. But instead, we'll take Deadeye. Fair enough. I mean, hey, maybe maybe Bills did it on purpose. Maybe he wanted to. Maybe he was just, you know, he's gloating a little bit. He has that pride in him where he's like, I don't even need my primary. If that's the case, it would definitely be nice to see a reversal from Quest, which hopefully they'll be able to do. Centaro is able to pick up a spark. Maybe they'll be able to get start sparking. And then, you know, obviously Vice getting that dead eye is super strong. And Toasty Local finding himself prize fighter. Definitely good for that damage scaling. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll see Bells just <laughs> dribbling it forward using that Tofu Fortress. But look at that beautiful angle from Toasty Local on the Glitch Pop. Able to get it out, but the unfortunate bounce means Bells can just dribble Summer Assault and shoot it into the net. Bells doesn't even need the primary. I mean, yeah, Bells so far has been putting on quite the performance. Like, this man, even without a primary, he's just doing super good. I mean,. I, I'm assuming he probably unbound primary at the start simply because of the ban skin. Uh, because if we ever see that sneak out, it's definitely going to be a moment to be sure. But so far, no dice on that, and we'll be seeing Dubu just try to win Strike Wars like normal without that log, with only his, uh, you know, ultimate, which we might see right here as the ball is in the corner, the best spot for it. But no, no ultimate, no dice. No dice indeed, and there it is. He used to try to KO Hamster Quest at full HP, or at least divide them from the map. And I like that little denial there uh, against the Zentaro, just trying to strike it, and he just rolls into it and says, "Stop, chill out. We don't, ha we don't want to have any of that here." I but, mean, we're seeing right yeah. here. You know, Bells and Vaughn both have core flips, so they'll be able to make a play with it. There's the pass down; doesn't quite get it. 
but Bells' egoist speed is making him move forward, able to dodge the cyber swipe actually. There it is, the roll forward into the core flip, into the goal, straight through Hamster Quest, who can't strike just quite yet as he is double stunned. Yeah, I mean, one was enough, but two is just brutal. And it's so hard if you're a goalie, you know, that stun. You have to watch out for people winning strike wars, but then you also have to worry about the mix-up of just getting absolutely slammed by a giant panda hamster that shouldn't even be in the game. Uh, so that's, you know, always something you have to look out for. There's a nice little interception by Vega, but we already lose. Had it red, <laughs> their core flip gets instantly dunked. Bells rolls <laughs> into the Tyco in the middle. Gives a little sad boys emote to show off that incredible play there. I mean, what we haven't seen so far, though, is an instant KO of Bell's, you know, somersaulting onto someone and then ulting them. But he definitely has been trying for it. Something similar like that. And maybe we'll see one before this game ends. That would be kind of... Kind of funny, but we're seeing Vaughn move forward with this Ego Speed, but he can't quite get the ball. There's the Dibu Confused emote, and there's the stall with the core flip, and there it is oh, right cool. into Bells' wall as they're able to get now onto the last potential set of this series. There was nowhere you could clear that core if you were Toasty Local. This time, Bells getting set MVP, and look at all these opportunities to be big Big Fish, Demolitionist, Ops for Missile Propulsion, which, you know, is one of Dubu's best awakenings, but also, like, he can't use his primary. Uh, so that'll just be for his ult, mainly that Tofu Fortress and some other good pickups here. Uh, I would say, is there a team you think wins this draft? I mean, Mako getting size just means defending is easier. Same with uh, the... Uh, Amy, but also Vaughn picking up Knife's Edge just means more speed on top of his Super Surge and Egoist Speed Awakenings. And Vega has Stagger Swagger, but it's not like they've been killing through that anyway, so all he gets is that 10% speed on top of his Spark of Agility. So overall, in terms of speed, I think Vaughn is doing better. And then in terms of bullying, uh, one of them's Mako and one of them's not Mako. So the job is a little bit different and now we're seeing Vaughn being able to push forward not quite able to get the goal as he's stunned from the glitch pop which means now with y'all moved up a little bit too far to get that bottom clear covered now they're going to be able to lose one barrier not the last one though oh Ooh. I spoke a little too soon as we're going to see the core flip though intercepted by an amazing glitch pop from Toasty Local now the ball is in the corner trying to get it through Toasty Local has that core flip to defend but the supernova is going to come out Ooh. and the cyber is going to miss which means the ball is going to roll into that bottom corner for now another point for the side of sad boys Bells is just striking the core in all the right places and getting rewarded for it. And it was funny earlier, I mean, we saw Vega try to use that right click ability, that primary to get it through Mako. And it's actually just a brick wall. It's like stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, not being able to ban out Mako on a map like this is actually really brutal. And even with Bells playing at a handicap, that Mako defense is, I feel, just much stronger than any IME could, uh, you know, put out. But Vaughn tries to save it there, ends up taking the own barrier. I don't think they're too upset about that one as Bells is just going to dribble it. This time, Hamster Quest looking for the same angle and the core flip mix up by Vaughn to be able to get the possession back. Here we go. Things are a little bit scary now, but Bells, you know, just kills them and immediately makes it a power play. Yeah, I mean, definitely a nice kill. I told you, who's looking for a play of that some sorts. There's the turn, but it's not down fast enough. Y'all is moving forward. There's the core flip. There's the corner shot. There is the goal. And now there is match point. A chance for there to be a 3-0 sweep with Bells on Dubu without primary. I mean, I think if you want to make it fair, you just have to take away all of Bell's abilities. He is playing out of his mind this game and the last one as well on that Julie. He was able to get so many kills. Vaughn almost loses his life, though, to Toasty Local. And I mean, I feel like Sad Boys just doesn't care right now. They're just flexing. They're playing their game and they don't care who it's against. Yeah, I mean, Vaughn is definitely finding a hard time, though, to stay, al stay alive, as he is, yep, there he goes, from the power cord, but there's the balls bouncing off, the, the balls, the core, bouncing off the Tycho Temple, trying to get it through, but it just seems that, can't quite figure out where it's going, there's the Supernova, though, so y'all already lose, looking a little bit damaged, they could decide to start going after the goalie here, but they might not, might not even have the chance to, as Vaughn is being able to shoot the ball forward, get it through, 
There is the slow onto Hamster. Bell's dribbling, getting the KO Ooh. onto Toasty. And now they're trying to just get this ball over. There it is. There it goes. Vaughn making the shot. And that's the series. That's the game. They went out with a bang of the drum and the bang of the goalie going off the side of the map there. Sad boys 2-0 in this series looking absolutely unstoppable. And that's going to be a scary team to run into moving forward in these future weeks. Yeah, I mean, sad boys definitely are. I mean, they were the winners of NASL season two. So quite definitely the team to be and unfortunately today quest esports couldn't quite make it happen but maybe they will now from this learn and get a little bit more experience and come back for that dream of one day taking them down hopefully that can happen maybe in playoffs yeah and i mean a, actually a perfect game coming out from uh from sad boys there zero goals scored despite so many shots i mean i think there was what 50 67 to 65 shots coming out from uh from quest esports and still not able to get any of them through absolutely brutal and just showing off the insane defense that you already lose has not only regularly but also on mako yeah i mean that that just go, game went to go to show what happens when you lose your ban for going name off and then you know and not being able to ban out bako mako because She's just so strong and so powerful. And uh, like, what can you realistically do against that? It's just, she has so many clear options. She feels like no. you're going up against a Dubu. And then she assists her forwards with that extra buff as if she's Era. Such <laughs> a difficult character to deal with. Not only does it feel like you're going up against a Dubu, it makes you feel like you're going up against a Tofu Fortress. I mean, we saw Vega trying to strike it through that secondary ability from Mako, and it's just running into a brick wall. Even using the projectile to try to get it all the way past them, it's just, it's not possible. Especially on a map like Taiko Temple, you know, home court advantage, of course. Um, but... It looks like we're going to be moving into a break here. I'm Tech Spooked Alter. Is there anything you want to say before we head into the break? I mean, all I want to say is Taiko Temple, Dubu Forward kind of works and kind of rules. And uh, that was without even his primary. Imagine if he was able to use it. Exactly. Well, Erez Kittens Club versus Bozo Bunch is going to be the next match. So stay tuned for that. We're going to hop into a little bit of a break here. And then uh, our two new wonderful casters will greet you then. But I'm Tech signing off. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in a bit.
Hey, Strikers. Welcome back to the North American Striker League. Oh. I'm here joined today by Saya. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're here for the match of the week. It is the Bozo Bunch versus Aeros Kitten Club. And fun fact that I was just reminded by, and I also reminded myself of, Aeros Kitten Club have never <laughs> beaten the Bozo Bunch ever. Whoa. Ever. So this is this is a, a decisive match. In... Sorry, I, the rod has consumed me. Favored, favored by Bozo Bunch, right? Yeah, j j just a little bit. But, you know, these just two a little teams bit. are pretty even. B before last night, it was kind of like a rock, paper, scissors situation going on. Last call, always beat Bozo Bunch. Bozo Bunch always beat Aeros Kitten Club, and Aeros Kitten Club always beat Last Call. But that all changed when Fudgy Waffles came in for the Bozo Bunch. They took the W over the Last Call, I believe, yesterday. And, you know, maybe these Bozos are better than the other Bozos because... I, Muncher, playing on the budget Lenovo laptop with an unfamiliar setup is probably suboptimal for that team. <laughs> <laughs> right, Fudgy Waffles, homewrecker, showing up for Boza Bunch, ready to break the the type triangle, where I'm actually ready to continue it because EKC is the ones that have to rise up against the demon that is Boza Bunch to break the streak. But hey, anything can happen. That's that's always the exciting part is EKC, uh, all of these teams, and not just EKC, has have been training up for week one, getting ready for their matches, and Bozo Bunch playing with Fudgy might not be the same as playing with Muncher, you know? Yeah. Definitely look quite different. The style of gameplay isn't really exactly like the bozo bunch that we're used to it really isn't the same as the bozo bunch where muncher just dives in with error octavia along with drop leto fudgy definitely pl plays a little more far back i feel like and it's, it's definitely a different team not to say one is necessarily super better than the other but you know um apparently soren was a little bit scared of this fudgy substitution so that might that might say something Ooh. Yeah, Soren's afraid of his, his defensive potential against a little bit of gully waffles action in case things get rough. You know how it is. But yeah, I, I think that's really interesting. Like you said, I is an incredibly aggressive player, and I and Dropletto are just a forward duo that can sweep any team's defense off their feet. And with Fudgy, like you said, they're playing a little bit more defensively, a little bit of a slower pace, and EKC could capitalize on that by trying to run a heavy offense, which, you know, NXCD and Katsuna are, I imagine, pretty fond of, especially looking at their, their character pools. If they just run a, a turbo damage comp and absolutely run over Dropletto or Fudgy, or even Forgot, who might pull up with Dubu and <laughs> just get Okie doll game. GG. Yeah, and so, it's... E yeah. It's a little interesting because the the picks and everything. Both these teams kind of favor similar stages, similar maps. The Inky Splash Zone pick is a pick that is avoided by many teams. But both of these teams are quite comfortable on it, for example. And so the, the map pick ban is a little bit confusing in, in that regard. Right. I, I'm really excited to see where we're going with this. Because, yeah, if we could see some inkies, we saw a little bit of inkies earlier, but most teams avoid it like the plague and just <laughs> do not want to deal with it. And, hey, that makes sense. We've been seeing a lot of a lot of narrow maps, too, closed maps. Those are, a lot of teams are very fond of those. Makes sense, but a little bit of, a little bit of everything. And if we can get some, <laughs> some open inkies action, I would be excited. Yep, a Blastoise in the chat. Oh yeah, Poke Blastoise. The Twitch Prime emote. The Twitch Global Twi Twitch Prime emote bundled in with your Twitch Prime su subscription, which you can use on Bestie and Slot right now. I, I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't usually say this on an asshole <laughs> Sub podcast. now! You I, have to sub now! I've been infected. Bestie and Slot is, is facing financial crisis. You have to understand, it's time to sub. Primers in the chat, rise up. Did this a fork over your five bucks? The op bug guy when he was talking about running ads and when he interrupted me and Alter talking about the general tweet lore on the Westy Wednesday broadcast with an ad, you know that changed something in me. <laughs> Maybe Appa is right. <laughs> Maybe. 
Maybe Mr. Bug has the sauce. Mr. Bug on the ad, Russell, getting the money in. We have to, we have to fund it somehow. We need money. We need money now. Watch ads. Turn off your ad blocker. Go, okay. go, go now. You know, I won't turn. Tell you to turn off your ad blocker though. <laughs> well, it's like it's like good cop, bad cop, <laughs> and I'm evil. And that's how you make them tolerate us running ads. <laughs> but using the lesser of two evils. Exactly. Okay, but we're 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 socially engineering the masses. <laughs> so the first two picks are Ooh. let's see. The first pick was Atlas Lab, then Night Market. Pretty normal so far. I hey, haven't heard those maps before. That's crazy. And it looks like Eris Kitten Club has not understood how to do the pick spans at all and has tried Let's to. Go. They have attempted to pick Inkies oh, yeah. when Inkies was one of three maps left and they had to ban one. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so big. Well, I wonder where they want to go. I mean, Bozo are fine with Inkies too, right? So. There's a good right, chance maybe that they... is just uh, foreshadowing. Right, maybe we see a, a game three Inkies. But until then, game one Atlas Lab, that makes sense. Everyone, I feel like everyone loves that map. Some might even say most neutral map in the game. Take him to the lab. To show up. And then Night Market second, uh, a really close map. I, I gotta say that, I think, really favors the Bozo Bunch. It's a great Era X map. You know, and I'm sure EKC can <gasps> pull up with Era X as well. But... The Bozos have banned Inkies in a twist of Whoa. fate. They, we are going to Clarion for our third map instead of Inkies. Oh, yeah. I love Clarion. Clarion is such a great game three map. Oh, my. It's, it's super decisive. And hey, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we are, we are warming up. To an Atlas Lab game one. I would say, looking at it, I'm, I'm expecting a, a good wholesome X coming out from Dropletto. That is what that guy plays. <laughs> and, he's, and he's pretty good at it too. And forgot, uh, I know he's been experimenting with the Mako. Who could have seen it coming? Probably a, a good pick, I think. I really want to see what Fudgy pulls out though. Because that guy might just run Era and then they Era X Mako. And then, you know, everyone cries himself to sleep tonight I, I, I that's think, fine i think that's what they're gonna run because you know I night market's on the table they, atlas lab is on the table clarion's on the table and all three of those maps look look very very doable for double kitten brawler you know it, it's that sad sort of thing yeah those are all mako era exable maps so i'm i think this series is all comes down to how EKC responds to what Bozo Bunch does. Because, like, Bozo Bunch is very clear with their strategy. They run Era or Octavia in the midfield, they get X out there, and then Forgot holds it down. And that's great, and it works really well. And EKC, I think, is a little bit more experimental, leans a lot into the, the damage picks. I know Soren you know, picks Amy Goli, and that. It's a really strong pick, especially on kickoff when you can just cyber swipe, win kickoff, and then your forwards are, are laid up to get going. But are they able to beat what Boza Bunch has to offer? You know? Yeah, that is the question heading into this first game on Atlas's lab, and it'll definitely be an interesting one. Um, but both of these teams can pilot KO comps, they can pilot the double buff brawler they can power a lot of different compositions and of course forgotten the goalie role has been called into question the depth of his striker pool that you know back when he was a doobie one trick it was a little dire um but you know mako exists now there are also other characters he is in the process of picking up and it will definitely be a different picture here and now we're just loading into game atlas's lab game one of the match of the week Bozo Bunch versus EKC. Oh yeah. Back to the lab again. 
Uh, again, I I want to see what EKC has prepped for this map. I want to see what they're ready to pull out. Oh my god, we see forgot. Default hovering the Rasmus goalie, which would be an insane pick to pull out. I've never seen him play. Hey, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Hey. <laughs> High aspirations. Hello, Mako. So we're probably going to see a Mako ban on the other side. And the Kazan ban, very understandable. You don't want NXZD walking over you. Okay, the X of Dropletto taken away, but it seems that Bozo Bunch has already predicted this ban hovering the Juliet on Dropletto instead of character that he has been picking up. Might not opt to go it. We'll probably... It really depends, but yeah, we'll lock in the jewel yet. But that means the Mako is available for Forgotten. Of course, we're going to see a lot of damage on both sides. Already Already the NXZD is entirely locked in. So th there's going to be a lot of KOs here. Yeah, this is about to be a bloodbath. We see Mako, Julie, Luna <laughs> for the side of Bozo Bunch and EKC rocking Amy, Zentaro, Luna. Luna Mirror in the midfield. It's Dropletto on the Julie, which I don't think we've seen in tournament before. Uh, like you mentioned, he's been practicing it. NXED on the signature Zentaro, Soren on the signature Amy pick, and Forgot Rock and Mako. And we are working on a prize <laughs> fighter start. Oh my god. Strap in. I, by the picks alone, you could tell that this was going to be a high KO match, but oh my god, it is time to get in there. And the barriers are already down for EKC. Yeah, and with the barriers down, it gets a lot harder to defend for this. I mean, Soren has just enough speed to reach the core that time, but has to use that blink proactively to keep the core up. Field Budgie Waffles trying to maneuver around Dropletto, trying to dash punch NXED, but is a little too early on that elusive Dropletto, though, staying alive. Still staggered, and Budgie Waffles on the top side will be both Soren and the Firewall Sentry for the first goal of the game. Yeah, incredible. He was able to get it around the turret and then kind of force Soren into a 1v1. Just <laughs> striking at him and then dashing to cover the cross clear. And just like Katsuna was there standing in the net next to him, but there wasn't really much that he could do. And Fudgy just was able to <laughs> clamp down on most of Soren's options, stop him. Oh, <laughs> but EKC able to get both barriers from Bozo Bunch and now looking to set up <laughs> a huge Zentaro ult. Yeah, not able to score on that try, but forgot, loses track of the core for a second, guesses that NXZD will shoot upwards, but NXZD shoots it directly in the shortest possible path towards the goal, looking like a bit of Juno Slime AI there from the Zentaro, and that time it works, mixes forgot up, and this kickoff, so, so important, Soren burning a lot of meter to elusive there, and you gotta keep your eye on that Budgie Waffles flip. Just as the Sagar bars go lower, you're tempted to use it to try and stay alive, but if Fudgy can... Oh my god, okay, Dash flips it for one barrier. Yeah, the Fudgy tech, uh, one of the first to ever do it. Probably not the first, but he <laughs> has named everything after himself. And there goes Dropletto, and I was walking into this point thinking, yeah, we haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen any KOs yet. You know, surprising. But now Dropletto on zero prize fighter stacks, Katsuna and Soren rocking two. EKC is looking to, oh my god, get Katsuna and Sorin a third stack, NXCD his second, and now only forgot is bearing a prize fighter stack on the side of Bozo Bunch. Things are looking a little rough for them as EKC is just using their, their higher power stats to start taking them out. Yeah, the snowballing coming through NXZD with another KO, and you have to think this set is in the bag. A triple prize fighter on each side means the game is so snowbally. It is one of the closest things we have to an all fire up start in terms of how wild and wacky the game gets. We can check it now, and it's three prize fighters all on the side of Eris Kitten Club and zero on the side of Bozo Bunch. That is a ridiculous power difference, and. It'll take a lot for Fudgy and Dropletto to stay alive here, but they get both barriers. They have a shot, and they have a shot to the bottom side of the net. Dropletto, despite the teammate going down, catches a rebound and gets the goal. Yeah, oh my god, Dropletto getting both the barriers with the help of Fudgy. <laughs> getting set up for a scoring position. Sees Fudgy get taken out. Says, nah, this is my time. I've got this. It just puts it in just like that. And that's what Juliet does, and that's why he picked up the character. Because she's so strong in that position. And Katsuna now staggered. KO'd. Fudgy and Dropletto reclaiming a prize fighter stack in this .5 of the set. Able to get both barriers to NXCD trying to get the barrier. and get anything but Fudgy and Dropletto are setting up to score right here. 
It's still a long road ahead of them. That goal doesn't just score itself. They have to get to drop Leto. And while they're trying to get to drop Leto, all the members of the Bozo Bunch are taking so much chip damage. But a great flip from Fudgy Waffles and Arrows King Club just blew a 3 to 0, a 9 to 0 prize fighter lead. Oh my god, Fudgy Angle hit him with it from across the map, from the goal box, able to get it in and is rewarded with missile prop for his troubles. An insane comeback coming out from Bozo Bunch, able to surmount the, <laughs> the triple prize fighter stacks that EKC were pulling up with. All right, in this draft, it's getting a little spooky, but especially because of that heavy impact pickup from Zentaro. Of course, Demolition is falling. That's scoring for Drop Little. We're seeing the difference in each team kind of branch out a little more there. A lot more damage on the side of EKC. A little more damage, of course, for the Bozo Bunch, but that Demolitionist will have to do a lot of work for a drop Leto, especially if they fall behind in the prize fighter race like last set. Yeah, exactly. And even in spite of it, Bozo Bunch was able to climb back, but I think with Heavy Impact Centauro pulling out <laughs> so much more damage and all the CDs back from Heavy Impact CDR, it's going to be so tough to deal with that. And Bozo Bunch just can't let EKC stack up so their, their mission right now with that demo, Julie, is to just score as soon as possible. And point one goes to Bozo Bunch, able to claim the mission just like that. I mean, with a demolitionist and, of course, with how they're playing so well so far, EKC are at such a massive disadvantage, right? They just gave the demolitionist over. Drop Leto was fourth pick in that draft. They had two members able to deny it. And, of course, you want to take the heavy impact on the Zentaro, sure. But Luna gets Hotshot, and as cool as Hotshot is on Luna... You know, I, I play a bit of Luna. Hot shots, cool. But maybe the demolitionist deny on a two barrier map against the Juliet was better of a pick. Oh, and a great save by NXZD catching the core, preventing oh the barrier God. from going down. And because of the KOs, if Eris Kitten Club stay alive long enough in this set, they can amass the prize fighters. If they score the goal, they have another point to play with. And as the prize fighters stack up, they have a better chance of winning this set. Oh my God, and forgot. Falls to the turret, falls to NXCD, and now <laughs> Bunchy Waffles in the net, ready to defend against EKC. Land up a point, but NXCD wins the strike war against Bunchy, who had to dash into the corner just to get there. And EKC claims a point and a couple prize fighter stacks, giving them, I think, a little bit of advantage to set despite Bozo having that Demolitionist Julie and a, a much clearer win condition here. Yeah, we'll see if it pays off, but they still need to get these last few KOs to fully get that 9-0 back. The Bozo damage tickling, but if it's tickling 3 million times, NXZD will be taking a lot of damage. But as that happens, the barrier goes down. Fudgy Waffles has no meter and barely any stagger left for God defending. Desperately getting a pass through to drop Leto, but Soren will defend against... The dash punch with only a strike. Hits it around the dash punch. Katsuna continuing to pressure. Katsuna getting the KO. And another. The double for Katsuna. And although Fudgy Waffle sends NXZD away, the goal will still sail in. And if we check the prize fighter stacks, the situation is dire. The situation is grim. Fudgy Waffle's left alone after both his teammates get knocked out. And uses a missile to try and get the core out. Unfortunately, it didn't hit, and I don't think he was left with any CDs to defend the net. So, <laughs> Luna without CDs, really easy to just clear into the open space, and EKC is just running over them! NXCD with an insane Centauro ult into the passive to slot it in there, and they have claimed a set of their own, tying up this game That's and giving them draft advantage here <laughs> with extra special and specialized on board for Katsuna. Oh my god. Yeah, the extra special being available is so, so devastating. Will it be picked up? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh yeah. There's a bit of a weight on that. Kind of got me a little scared, but Forgot will be sparking up, but that means just more and more damage on the side of Eris Kitten Club. That prime time, two primaries, better than one, especially on Zentaro. So... This is just getting really scary after that extra special dropped right into the lap of Eris Kittens Club. Yeah, EKC is, is looking vicious, ready to just <laughs> come out the gates, pump and damage. Forgot having two sparks, I think, is just hoping 
to <laughs> get Spark of Resilience sometime soon and live. And Fudgy pulling up with the Stagger Swagger will definitely help a lot. But you can only do so much into the offensive titans that are Luna and Zentaro. Oh, and NXZD catching the core with the primary. So much utility there and a great shot to their bottom side. Would have liked the KO on Fudgy Waffles too, but will definitely take the goal any day. And a new point means another crater in the hands of Katsuna, who will just drop it, force Elusive out of drop Leto. So much meter burned, so much damage tacked on as the Bozo Bunch try to advance. They get one barrier, they get the refresh, drop Leto, punches it through, but can't get the second barrier. The timeless Aimee turret lasts just too long. Yeah, drop Leto able to get that second barrier with the dash punch. We got sitting on this one, holding a little bit, but these extra special Luna nukes are coming out and just Fudgy is, is taking damage, getting cut through. Drop Leto, though, with the ult, almost gets it through. Soren saves it. Incredible save. NXCD looking a little head chunked out. Drop Leto goes for a KO on Katsuna. But now Fudgy Waffles is forced back to defend. Another <laughs> crater comes out, and Fudgy is just fighting for his life. Katsuna with the core flip on the barrier. And Fudgy almost takes an insane interaction against Soren with the 1v1. But here, Katsuna looking low now, forgot defending it out of the net with some help from Dropletto. Dimes up Fudgy, who almost sends it in with a rocket. He gets it around town, and the ball is just going everywhere right now. Fudgy Waffles, another boost available, attempting, but no, denied by Soren, who has flip available now, sends it to the top corner, defended away by Forgot, but that's a KO onto the goalie of EKC. Can they make it happen? Katsuna from downtown into the special that held the core from NXZD. And despite the power play, despite Soren being gone, Bozo Bunch cannot hold on. Eris Kitten Club one goal away from taking a lead here. Yeah, Soren falling, but an insane play coming out from Katsuna and NXZD. NXCD holding the core with the Zentaro and Katsuna just able to slam it through. Something that uh, I think is really easy to pull off on paper, but so hard in practice. But you know that these two have been playing together long enough to make something like that happen. But Dropletto is just in there, in EKC's walls, taking out the barriers and then core flip punching it right in to secure a point for this set. And maybe even mount a comeback here. Yeah, drop Leto in the midst of everybody, and keep in mind that the prize fighter situation this time is actually slightly in the advantage of the Bozo Bunch. So this is not like the previous sets. They are the ones in the driver's seat in terms of damage. And if they get this KO on NXZD, they can start snowballing even further. But Katsuna with the core control, with the hotshot, trying to send the core forward, denied. Drop Leto is by Soren, still pushing up is the Juliet. But no, again, Katsuna is there. Katsuna just feels like... He's everywhere in this game, but Dropletto is the one who defends that time. But the ensnare drums miss. Dropletto has to get away, manages to unstagger himself. Just barely, the stagger bug is in full force today. The visual bug is quite annoying here. Fudgy Waffles with the flip available. We'll try to go in. Dropletto now trying to defend against the flip in front of the net, but no, denied again and again by Soren. This Ivy goalie is holding on so well. Yeah, NXCD coming out with a crazy play with the passive and the dash, but eventually Ball gets to drop Leto. He's able to get the barrier. Forgot holding on to this one, but not for long. Has a core flip. Fudgy is down, but it doesn't matter because Drop Leto is able to sneak it right past Soren and tie up this set. 2 2. And NXCD and Katsuna sitting on two prize fighter stacks. Soren zero. And Forgot, the only one with more than one stack on his team. Very interesting, but. It's, I think, EKC, if they want to win this point, they have to make use of this prize fighter. And, <laughs> hey, Katsuna has the right idea, trying to go after Dropletto. Damaged a little bit himself, but Fudgy is just feeding Dropletto the ball, trying to get this barrier. And, I mean, Bozo Bunch is fighting, and I think looking really good here. Trying to get, <laughs> especially with these stagger bars, NXCD and Katsuna. Ooh. Recovering a little bit, Dropletto looking low, but able to get that barrier. It does not matter, and Fudgy is getting in there. One pass is all it takes. Dropletto with a special de denied by Soren strike, but Dropletto still surviving in the midst of absolutely everybody. Still surviving despite that crater, dodging away from that Katsuna. 
attempt on his life, getting the KO onto NXZD instead, but they still have to secure this goal. Fudgy with the patience, but it goes directly to Soren, who manages to defend it away. Flip available, and that will be the set win for the Bozo Bunch. Eris Kitten Club are not allowed to take the lead here. The Bozo Bunch will be the ones with only one set remaining in this game, and Fudgy Waffles, the potential to get Deadeye, is here, and it has arrived. It has arrived. What an insane comeback by Bozo Bunch, and <laughs> winning another set, Fudgy taking MVP. First time he got Missile Prop, this time he got Deadeye, just rocking out with 50% more damage on his ult, on his missiles. It's 32% more damage on his dash. It is coming out. NXCD, though, Getting Rapid Fire, which Rapid Fire Prime Time, not a combo you expect on Zentaro, but so vicious with all the utility that he can pull out with Primary and just damage. Zentaro Primary, not an outstanding ability you know, on its own, but when you have 50 of them, uh, it does not matter. And in the midst of that, forgot, although he was <laughs> last or second last pick, still got team player. And although that's understandable because there's not a lot of characters that want to pick up team player here, just so good on this Mako character, the empowered strike with the team player is basically a, sh a core flip from the other side of the map, but it doesn't matter if NXZD is in your face, Katsuna is following up. Eris Kitten Club looking as good as ever, unfazed after that last set. Yeah, they were able to just, once they got both barriers, <laughs> they mounted their, their full assault and just wiped forgot and soren here oh they picked up chrono boost last draft which not to mention but that means that he has so much more influence on the midfield and enemy side of the map with these dashes like there oh but able to catch the core flip after going out for a dash forgot holding on to this one barrier a little bit of help from fudgy able to get it just trying to get it forward to dropletto oh, oh and stuns soren to let the core go in just like that. A beautiful play by Fudgy. Yeah, Soren no meter available. No way out of that one. Unfortunate situation to be in, but the Bozo Bunch are the ones who capitalize. And now they have to make something of this because the kickoff from Eris Kitten Club was so good. They got a barrier, but on the other side, Drop Leto refreshes cooldowns. Gets a lot of damage on the Katsuna, and without an elusive, that Luna is down. And they also defend the barrier as well. If Fudgy Waffles can stay alive, this is a massive lead for the Bozo Bunch. If the flip is taken away, but Dropletto still gets the barrier regardless. That's cooldowns refreshed again from the Demolitionist. Katsuna on the other side takes the barrier from downtown. Dropletto on a dribbling play to the top side. And Soren can't get there in time. The Bozo Bunch convert. Fudgy Waffles stay... Uh, Fudgy Waffles is alive. Not dead, staggered, but still survives. They're one point away from winning this game. Yeah, and I mean, look at Dropletto's <laughs> meter right now. After using Core Flip, he, he is back up to a healthy two evades. Power of Egoist from last draft going crazy. And we might even <laughs> see a Core Flip coming out from him soon. Katsuna getting staggered. And Dropletto is on the hunt. Look at him go. Yeah, Dropletto lurking with the flip, with the speed, but can't really make too much use of it. Ends up having to burn it on that elusive. That crater combined with the center would have probably one-shot him, so... It is what it is, and this time the clear is caught by NXZD. It's evened up in this fourth set. EKC don't want to go down without a fight. They want to advance to the fifth set to another draft and want to claw their way back into this game. Yeah, match point for Bozo Bunch, but EKC looking to bring it back. Not ready to give it up just yet. Just NXZD almost going nuclear there on Forgot's <gasps> Barriers, but Fudgy! <laughs> That's a fudgy angle. Pulls off angle. the double barrier in kind. That's a fudgy angle. All right, drop Leto now low, but still staying alive. One strike is all it takes in front of the nets, but is finally taken now. It's Fudgy Waffles now looking for a snipe with the rocket. Soren will not let that happen. Clears safely to the bottom side. Katsuna looking for a double barrier of their own, but Fudgy is there to save on the bottom side. NXZD going in. The barrier finally taken. NXZD wins the strike war, but the goal gate hasn't finished opening yet. The defense still there for the Bozo Bunch. NXZD still in there, but KO'd by Dropletto from downtown, but Katsuna on the top side with a short range boost will send us to a fifth set despite the striker advantage, despite the great KO from Dropletto. It was not enough. Yeah, oh my god, what a beast. NXZD, <laughs> not quite able to put it in, but the ball goes right into Katsuna's range, able to dash it in. 
That is insane. And here, here are all of the awakenings. All the big ones. We got a super surge. NXCD is, is definitely fiending for that. Oh, but denied from Fudgy, understandably. Yeah. Probably going to be picking aerials. But Will forgot be able to pick up the Spark of Resilience. He... You know, agility, right? Oh, the, it was debating it there. It was agility or resilience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, unsure which one to pick. And honestly, I definitely a hard decision. Yeah, it goes for <laughs> the resilience. The prize fighter not really factoring in this last set as much. But hey, NXCD at one health, I was going to say, <laughs> might be taken out, but able to just put it in with the help of Katsuna right there and EKC is is really surging right now yeah that twin drive on Soren on the eject I mean such a powerful awakening and wait a second all the stagger in the world oh, won't no. save you from knockback alone forgot taken out it's up to fudgy waffles to be the hero one barrier taken looking for two but immediately taken out by Katsuna the prize fighter stacking up and this is no longer that set where Bozo Bunch clutched it out the scaling has commenced prize fighter with the awakenings is an insurmountable damage advantage this late in the game and I have to think, EKC are looking at a 3-0 here. I mean, yeah, Era Scaling Club. Hey, my bad for saying Prize Fighter was not a factor in this set. Hey, I was wrong. E EKC knew something that I didn't, and that was to... Oh my god. Wait a second. Get KO'd by Drop Leto, I guess. Oh, Hold on, signs of life. defense by Soren. Finally, oh loses a Strike War, but still, signs of life from the Bozo Bunch. But NXZD will deny it. So many cooldowns to work with, continuing. But a KO and the goal. The best case scenario for the Bozo Bunch. So many prize fighter sacks swing all the way around, and they're back in the game. Now hold, they are back. Drop Leto just bossed up in a major way is now sitting at three prize by oh, attack so and fudgy zero. waffles and, and double oh barrier. my god fudgy waffles with the with the curse technique double barrier able to get it not able to get the goal <laughs> Still looking for it. Still dribbling to the bottom side. Drop Leto has cooldowns available. Lurking with the punch, but it will be taken out. It's Fudgy alone again, trying to snipe it down. But remember, both barriers are still up for the Bozo Bunch. And Forgot can just strike it. Can proc team player the Fudgy Waffles and threaten across the entire map. Missing a lot of strikes, though. The barrier taken. Eros King Club with a huge opportunity. Remember, Katsuna does have that hot shot. It's so scary. Can also get the KOs as well. And is advancing the open net is there. Forgot wins the strike war, but at what cost? Goes down. Five seconds left on the respawn, and NXCD will win the strike war to bring Eris Kitten Club to a win in the first game. Uh, oh my god. Vicious final point, but Eris Kitten Club <laughs> turned the power up to an 11 and did what they are they're known to do, which is kill people. Kill people, take them out, and win the game off of it. So, you know, it was, it was back and forth that entire game but by the end EKC was just looking way stronger and able to just sweep through everything that Bozo Bunch had yeah and you know the, even even despite Bozo Bunch making some resurgences in those sets making the clutch plays while you also the double barrier Eris Kitten Club didn't get shaken they locked down they played like they were still two points ahead and closed it out yeah, I, um, a beautiful play coming out from EKC. And uh, Bozo Bunch has to respond to that. <laughs> and I think uh, since we're going to Night Market next, they have a pretty good opportunity to do so. You know, uh, a great Era X map might be time for you know, Old Reliable to come out. Hit him with it. So I'm, I'm very interested. Uh, again, like... I said before the last match, I'm, I want to see what EKC pulls out on Night Market. Because I think a team's Night Market strategy is incredibly important. And it's a, a decisive decision. They could pull out something like, I don't know, Zentaro and oh, Era midfielder. But that, that sounds like a, some comfort picks. But it's hard to deny that by pulling up with Julie. On night market is really good pulling up with era x on night market is phenomenal of those kinds of things so i want to see what what they have in store you know yeah it, we'll definitely have to see what they pull out here on the the next map i'm hearing a little bit of dallas 
sorry, Denver ping issues, but unfortunately that's something we can't avoid. It is the Denver coin flip after all. And if the Denver servers the Denver aren't working very flip. well, there's no other option. Yeah, it's uh, hard to deal with. I don't know. What do you do? The servers are <laughs> the servers are a cruel, cruel beast. All right, but it looks like we're heading into the next game. That was a very close one still. I think both teams are locked in, not discouraged, not, I guess, with too much wind in their sails either. I, I, think, I think this is going to be still a close series. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's still anyone's game. You know, EKC may be up one, but I, I don't think Bozo is a team that can ever be counted out. I think the, the moment you start counting out Bozo Bunch is the moment you... I don't know, start, start losing. The moment you watched him get third place at Afrika. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but here comes the Dubu. She's actually uh, a little worrying. Because if, if Dubu is Dubu's here and EKC runs something, I was going to say like Kazan. My bad. Not Kazan. I will be banned. But I don't know. If NXCD pulls up with X. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm I mean, nailing it today. They're not giving Dropletto the X. This, this is Night Market. This is the Bozo Bunch pick. This is where they spam Era X over and over and Whoa. over. And I also dabbles a little bit in the Octavia. And Fudgy Waffles could also dabble a little bit in that Octavia magic here. But we'll probably just go with the Era. Just three individually strong picks on this map, most likely. And on the other side, Soren does pull out the Mako. Yeah, and there's a Mako. You know, forgot playing it last game. Now Soren on it this game. The the defensive potential of this character is insane. But obviously Dubu it is the, the Tofu Titan. It's what he does. Hold it down. And forgot. Known for the pick. Feeling comfortable on it. And we're looking at a reverb spark of agility start, which is a, a great start for scaling. Uh, set one, we're gonna be taking it a little, little slow this time. But oh my god, I'm, I'm just. Hey, I know Forgot's <laughs> really good at at the Dubu, but I'm, I'm shocked he held that down. Hey, he, good job. He is holding it down, but it is kind of, I guess, a little disappointing to see the Dubu in the situation because Mako is just Dubu, but you could also buff your teammates. It feels like in terms of that defensive potential, and you get to be. You get to give that global era buff as well. Look at that. Soren defending against Drop Leto. Soren really just holding it down here. Forgot as well. These barriers are not going down anytime soon. NXZD not able to win the strike war. Forgot winning them all. Finally, a good punch from NXZD will take it. Flip available from Forgot though to turn the situation around. But on Night Market, Soren will just hold that barrier for eternity, it feels like. And the core is permanently on the side of the Bozo Bunch. They need to get it out somehow, but. With that additional speed, it's just so easy for them to maneuver around the map. They get the first goal. EKC looking confident on the Bozo map pick. Yeah, which is, which is really surprising. Um, we have not brought up that Katsuna is pulling up on Night Market with Estelle. And I think, isn't a terrible pick. I, I Right, Estelle is... Oh, dead. <laughs> Estelle is dead. Estelle has but been taken off the side. It's, it's so hard to justify playing Estelle when there are... Like, just three better characters that you can play. And oh my god, Dropletto just went nuclear and able to catch the core on the Soren angle, putting it in. Oh my god, it's almost like 30% speed. Oh no, wait, they don't. Sorry. They, they don't I have thought a that Mako. He, they don't, but they have an era. He, he got sped up somehow, and I uh, have. <laughs> we're we're living in the Mako era. Bark. I don't blame you. <laughs> we are, this is Mako's world, and we're just living in it. Right, but as the round star progresses, as the kickoff continues, this time it is Bozo Bunch with all the core control. They're playing confidently. They're hitting the core up, winning the strike wars, and Soren's primary, Soren's primary does not charge enough to reach the core in that situation. Bozo Bunch, unfazed, two goals in a row, looking to make it three in this next one, and Forgot has the meter to make up for it. Lots of insurance for this one. Yeah, both brawlers here looking pretty similar in terms of energy. Like you said, forgot sitting on a core flip. Soren getting close to one himself has it now, and I I think it just comes down to whichever team can burn 
the enemy goalie's core flip first and then make use of their own. That's but oh, Katsuna pulling up with one of his own EKC. A little bit of an energy advantage here. Yeah, and Zorn actually got a little bit caught off guard by how Dropletto spaced around the ensnare drums there on the bottom side. Just specialed and walked forward a little bit, caught the core, and I don't think he would reach that. He did. The barrier was taken, and now they're looking for the second barrier. Dropletto taking a lot of damage, but it's being healed up by the orb. Great defense by Zorn cutting the pass between Dropletto and Fudgy Waffles. And again, Katsuna interrupting over and over to power the Estelle at range as well, threatening the barrier. Forgotten now, walling off NXZD, keeping Drop Leto safe, but still taking damages Drop Leto. That's not a KO. It does burn the flip from NXZD, but they lose a barrier in return. They gotta play so carefully in this situation. Yeah, Drop Leto staggered, <laughs> uh, afraid of Katsuna and NXZD taking him out, dash punching them away. Both brawlers are staggered, but Bozo Bunch has to get this barrier sometime soon. Got still sitting on the flip, but it is dangerous, and Drop Leto. <laughs> Still staggered. Fudgy gets the barrier. Just trying to push it up to him now. Drop Leto. Days are numbered. <laughs> and Katsuna and Soren trying to take him out. Soren finally gets him. His days. And I forgot. He uses the flip. His days were numbered, but that number was pretty high. Surviving for quite a long time, <laughs> having a few attempts at the goal as well, and coming up now on the respawn. If Forgot can get out of this situation, if Katuna is unable to snipe it a little bit longer, the Tofu Fortress will assist in that as well, blocking away the snipe. NXZD stunned away, but NXZD so many chances still defended away by the absolute size of Forgot. The log will send it back, but NXZD is getting three million tries. This guy is getting the core every single time. Doesn't succeed that time either, but Katsuna is also building up the flip. The night market angle off the center mixes up for Got, and we're all evened up. What an insane night market angle. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Katsuna just rips a crazy flip and forgot on, on a humble little dubu. Just doesn't have many options to get down there in time to react to it. Now we're, we're looking at a 0.5 on what is... Uh, an incredibly decisive set. I think both these teams really want to, you know, pull up on their good awakenings. But both barriers drop for Bozo and NXCD. Posturing to get in there, tries to KO drop Leto, but forgot and Fudgy able to clear it out. But oh, what is Soren doing up here? Soren walked up, tried to oh. get the flip, but Fudgy Waffles walled off the entire section. But in that play, they managed to get so much damage on Drop Leto. Drop Leto is dead. Yet again, and NXCD's in position, almost gets it through for God on the roll, but for God realizes in time, gets the strike out, doesn't get scored on like that. NXCD now advancing the flip from Forgot will send it right through but Forgot space is too far back gets KO'd there and XZD now low but still advancing Soren as well but the core will slip past the barrier will be taken four seconds left on the respawn but it's overtime the core is accelerated forward and before the Dubu can come back the goal is scored Eris Kitten Club one set up on this map yeah a beautiful strike coming out from NXCD just barely grazing past Drop Leto's punch to defend and here we have Katsuna taking MVP kind of just has a wide variety to pick from takes aerials probably the best pick for Estelle and here I'm not sure what what Dubu wants probably missile prop heavy impact <laughs> falling to Mako denies it from drop Leto incredible oh. and just gets 35% off the secondary cooldown so, so insane. The Bozo Bunch just play to deny NXZD as much as possible, leaving him with Super Surge. But NXZD, if he's comfortable with that Super Surge, that's mu not much of a deny at, at all. It is very powerful if you prefer it. A lot of people don't prefer it, but oh! NXZD... And he prefers it. That guy is super surging. That guy is super surging. <laughs> play Centaurus, maybe a bit fond of the, the Awakening. Yeah. <laughs> What Bozo thought was uh, a rough situation for NXCD <laughs> shows him that he's got it like that. Now. Both. One barrier for each team. They're just... Oh, Tornado Alley taking it there. Soren yeah. sitting on a core flip already. It's only been 40 seconds. 
Yeah, the energy generation from this Mako is coming in clutch, especially look at Dropletto, almost dead, but both barriers somehow taken. The Bozo Bunch with the scoring fairy taken on the other side, though, looking a little scary, and Dropletto is taken out. Fudgy Waffle solo. We've seen this story before. No global Luna Dash to get any snipe goals on the other side of the map. It will take some honest midfielding here. And a snipe! That is all it takes. Oh my, oh Fudgy my Waffles. God. 1v3 effectively. Yeah, a bit, a bit of honest midfielding out there. Ripping the arrow beam straight into the goal. Bang. That's a point for Bozo Bunch there. Just <laughs> pack pulling up and saying, I don't need teammates. I'm a one-man army, a one-man show. Yeah, just catching a tiny bit of impatience from Sorin, right? It's not really as much to be called a bad habit, of course, but sometimes when you're in that striker advantage, you want to just push the rock forward. You want to give it to your forward. You want to score before the respawn timer comes up and Fudgy Waffles catching that impatience there. Has a NATO again. Torn zoned away. Not KO'd, unfortunately, for the Bozo Bunch. But they're still advancing. They're still looking. But Dropletto has to watch out. The Super Surger is approaching. Torn misses the primary, and that miss will cost them a goal. The Bozo Bunch are well and truly back in the game. Yeah, it, it is a... <laughs> this set's looking like a bozo sweep here. Just showing up and... And taking back. But they have it. Oh my god, Dropletto. Oh my oh god, my god The double kill! The bozo Bunch is so back right now, and it's just Soren left to defend against the onslaught that they're putting up. Forgot sitting on the midfield line with the core flip, rips it, gets the barrier for it! And Dropletto trying to KO Katsuna again, but Fudgy... Catches the dimer from drop and puts it in the bottom corner where all the empty space was. And Bozo Bunch takes that set, ties it up, and might be rewarded in draft here. Yeah, but a, a few awkward takes in this draft. Definitely not the game winning super base draft that they were looking for. Great Awakenings, regardless, you'll always take an egoist. You'll always try to pass a demo down. Of course, it has to be denied. So the later half of this draft is quite interesting. The prize fighter build, team player, importantly, available for the Dubu of Forgot, which will help them in the midfield quite a bit. But NXED with that prize fighter could become a little bit of a threat because that guy is getting KOs. Saya, do you see what I see? What? I see a three spark dropletto oh on board right now. Yeah, pack, pack in the CD. Packing the agility and the strength now. Wait, and Torn grief by taking demo. Because th that guy was never going to go for demo in the first place. Yeah, he picked up the spark. And <laughs> now he's a bit of a secretary in the building. So we're not able to make much from the demo. And yeah, you're right. I don't think Dropletto was ever going to take demo there. So that is, that is insane. Yeah, that's a little tough. NXED though, still trying to score the core that goes directly back, and Katsuna is the one who gets another hit on it. Fudgy Waffles, entrusted by Forgot, with a little bit of strike mashing there. Unfortunately, it doesn't exactly happen. But Dropletto is a bit of a spark monster, so as the set progresses, I think the picture will change. Yeah, it just swagging up on the field <laughs> with more stats than anyone can fathom. And if he can put it to good use, it, it will be game altering. But NXCD with the Super Surge, it just shows up, takes both barriers, and is close to a core flip. Yeah, Fudgy Waffles had a chance on the bottom side, but Katsuna gets the outplay there to save the barrier. The angle not quite found. Dropletto now looking for the top barrier. Gets it. Fudgy Waffles looking for the bottom one, but NXZD has the flip. They need to play around that so carefully as Soren is still holding it down. NXZD solo KO'd by the Summer Assault of Forgot. The Incinerator Drum stalled the core for a little bit. Katsuna almost just primaries. Forgot does not have a chance to get the flip. And Soren caught walking a little bit too far forward. And drop Leto with the coverage. Punch, strike, dash. Catches Soren's flip. And that's 1-1. Yeah, hit him with the forbidden combo. Punch, strike, dash. And the Flying Phoenix will send it in. Had a, a tornado coming from Fudgy to cover. <laughs> Pretty much all of Soren's options there. Not much you can do. And... Buster ties up this set. Oh, and Katsuna oh my God. goes for an angle, but it's still defended. And Dropletto gets an angle of his own. The flip available. Dropletto there for another strike, but Soren will defend it all by himself. But the NATO will squeeze it right through the bottom corner. 
and the Bozo Bunch somehow miraculously defend against Katsuna and just steamroll the barriers of Eris Kitten Club on that point. Yeah, what an insane point from all three members of Bozo Bunch. It just absolutely ripping EKC to shreds right there. And looking to do it again, one point away from winning this set. You know, have barrier advantage, looking good, keeping up the pressure. NXCD unable to get in there and force it. But Soren and Katsuna hold that barrier. Oh! Oh! Drop Leto with the KO, finding Katsuna off the bottom edge, and now Drop Leto looking for this barrier. The flip will not connect. A little bit too late on the trigger, but the punch will be perfect. Looking like a sniper there. Drop Leto now dribbling. Soren clearing away, but that's a secondary down. That's a primary down. No cooldowns left on Soren, and the dash punch will hit him in the face. Bozo Bunch taking the lead on this night market game, and the next draft could be the one to break it wide open. All right, Drop Leto getting MVP. Really, the, the last spark was unfortunately lost on the last, the last draft, but I'm looking at one-two punch right here. That could be insane. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. One-two punch picked Triple up. Triple spark, one-two punch Julie with Bumblers on board. Rapid fire falling to Estelle. A phenomenal pick, honestly, but and, and a great deny from Fudgy here. So, you know. Yeah, a He's lot. looking good. And Stagger Swagger for NXCD won't help against these dash punch KOs, but with the prize fighter, could help stay alive, prevent getting staggered, maybe make a little bit more happen with that extra speed too. Yeah, and a lot of denies coming out against NXCD, right? The big fish mm -hmm. to forcing him on the Stagger Swagger, not letting NXCD really become a size scaler here. Going for a KO on Drop Leto, but that guy is so fast. He is moving around, getting the barriers. Fudgy Waffles in the midfield as well. NXZD, though, in position, gets the stun, gets a barrier, and Katsuna looking for another, but Fudgy Waffles and Drop Leto defend the barrier, get the KO. They're pushing forward. They want this barrier now, but unfortunately, Soren still defending. The flip might have to be burned here. Drop Leto dodging away from the super surge dash of NXZD. Using the burst to elusive for the time being, but has to be so careful here. Soren has a kill combo. No, it hits the core instead. Stays alive and m many more abilities are burned on Drop Leto than Eris Kitten Club would have liked. But the Tofu Fortress does not quite trap the core on the other side of it. And Eris Kitten Club still have the offensive push going. The Super Surge dash comes out from NXZD. It does not score and NXZD is next on the chopping block. Yeah, Forgotten Fudgy holding right here. NXZD <laughs> pulling up and... Yeah, on life support, struggling to survive, but oh my god. <gasps> what a shot by NXZD. Was so low on the stagger, but mixes up. Forgot on the other side of the map. Gets the core, that's one opening. That's all it takes. The core hit the barrier a little too hard. Ricocheted to the other side. And the Bozo Bunch let that one slip away, but this time they get, they're getting the KO. They're looking for the goal here. Yeah, able to get one barrier. Bozo trying to get two, Drop Leto almost getting it with the punch, putting out a ton of damage to Katsuna right now. <laughs> and that tornado also just taking a chunk out of him. And then Fudgy pulls up with an insane dribble into core flip, gets the barrier, true combo. NXCD trying to take out Fudgy, not able to make it. And Drop Leto is sitting there looking for the core, trying to get it in. Fudgy pushing it forward and finding it. <laughs> And now, forgot, put on the defensive. Has the core flip. Oh my god, Drop Leto. <laughs> Has the kill button. So does NXCD, though. And both midfielders are out. Forgot pushing up with his core flip. It'll make something happen. <laughs> Filling in for the midfielder. You know, sometimes I is missing, then Forgot goes, or then Fudgy goes missing, and Forgot says it's my turn. Yeah, really just trying there, but now it's overtime. And now it gets a little scary. The team player activated. But Drop Leto taken out by NXZD. Remember, that prize fighter on NXZD is a factor in this game. That guy is stacking up. Forgot defending for now, but the center of Night Market is not as friendly. Drop Leto with the respawn, but NXZD in position. Going to the bottom side of the map, but the core is a little too fast. Katsuna now lining it up, but Fudgy Waffles is there to cover the other side of the goal. But a shot to the top side is a little too fast for the Dubu. Eris getting Club 2-0 up here. Looking to send us to another fifth set. Yeah, NXCD sitting on three prize fighter stacks, and you know if if ever, if ever there was a way to go to a set five, it's that NXCD being denied all game. You know, <laughs> taking super surge because there was just 
not much left for him. And still, yeah. Prize Fighter becoming incredibly impactful and paving a way for a win condition to get into this game. But in spite of that, Fudgy and Dropletto are putting on such a monstrous offense. Soren able to hold on to it for now, but with just one barrier left, you know, and just zero barriers left, how long can he hold? Yeah, it's getting a little scary here. NXED getting desperate, trying to catch an impatient clear by Forgot, but Forgot has no impatient clears at the moment. Patiently sending it forward, waiting for Dropletto to find an opportunity, but Fudgy Waffles will let, let the core slip by for a moment, and Dropletto is now dead. Again, Forgot pressured on the top side, forced to make the defense happen, burns the core flip, still loses the barrier regardless. Oh, but NXED actually interrupts that shot from Katsuna. It is saved. Dropletto respawns, but the barrier is taken. Eris Kitten Club now in position if Dropletto cannot make a play, but he does the special just enough to barely score it with that angle. And Bozo Bunch still could win it in this set. Yeah, most most normal Julie Ult angle is sending it off the barrier and up right into the net. And I send yeah, like you said, this is Bozo Bunch's time to claw back this set and make something happen. I mean, it's it's a battle between three Sparks and three Prize Fighter stacks between the Julies. Whichever one can make use of the kit that they've been given, I, I think will be the victor. But I forgot, struggling to keep these barriers, NXCD and Katsuna just keep shooting away from the Dubu. And with... You know, such limited mobility, even with the momentum boost. Oh. But it doesn't matter because Dropletto just bosses up in a major way with the flip punch right, right through the entirety of EKC, tying up the set and bringing us to match point. Dropletto in front of the net, it's quite the menace. Got the barrier, got the goal and gets two <laughs> barriers immediately. Sure is. This guy got two barriers. They just need one more goal to send us to a third game here in this series. And it's looking very possible because Drop Leto, this guy stays alive. This guy will not die here. This guy will elusive the punch. This guy will get the middle speed. This guy will run up. Okay, well, interrupted a little bit, but still finds oh! the angle between two where I thought it wasn't possible. He does it. It's 1-1. We're heading to game three. He is a liver. He will not fall. And in the midst of all the chaos and everyone trying to take him down, he shoots it right between Soren and Katsuna, gets the goal, nails that set and the game, and brings us to a game three. These two teams are just going back and forth. I'm ready for a game three. This series was match of the week for a reason. Yeah, I'm 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 feeling it. I'm so excited for a game three Clarion. This this is where this is where anything can happen. Anything is possible on this map. You know, we m might see a different band come out because it's just been Kazan and X. Actually, hey, I thought about it. Uh, <laughs> this is a great X map and a great Kazan map. I don't think we'll be seeing any different bands, but we might be seeing different picks. I think the the midfielder picks here are going to really define this game. I imagine. We'll probably see a Dubu come out from Forgot. He looked he looked pretty good on it. I'll say it. Who could have seen it coming? Probably gonna see a an Amy or a Mako from Soren. You know, also who could have seen it coming? Uh, pretty high up on his picks list. But I have no idea what Fudgy would want to pull out here. I have no idea what Katana wants to pull out here. So I I think it's the midfielder matchup that will make this upcoming match very decisive. Yeah. Katsuna on the Luna got the better of Fudgy Waffles in that particular mirror and on Night Market. Both performed exceptionally well. But Fudgy Waffles, I think, just had so much control in the midfield, gave Drop Leto so many chances. Whereas on the other side, Ariskin Club, it was more of a team effort. Soren did a lot of the legwork hitting the core from all the way across the map. So we'll definitely have to see on Clarion a map that has a lot more, I guess, uh, variants than other ones yeah and here you see here comes the dubu oh rasmus flash jump scare 
You, you, know, a... you know he's tempted to pick it. Yeah, it's... <laughs> the voices in the back of his head are talking. Yeah, but here comes the Kazan ban. Almost definitely an X-ban. Yep. No surprise there. Drop auto on the Julie. Hey, it's a great X map. It's a great Kazan map. Also a really good Julie map. Who could have seen it coming? Probably going to be seeing a Juliet mirror. And Fudgy hovering the now. Oh, and everything I just said was wrong. Hello, Zentaro. Also a good Zentaro map. Hey, guys. Welcome to Brawler City. They're coming out in full force. Oh, and this Dubu pick. Uh, I, I, yeah, it, like, it is for God's Dubu after all. But, but it, he is different. He, he is different. And you know, looking at these comps, as long as the start isn't damage, I think Bozo Bunch got this. Yeah, and it's fight or flight extra special, which are uh, really great for Dubu. Really great for <laughs> most of these characters Luna, Amy, etc. Now, looking good. Yeah, I think I Bozo Bunch and their comp is favored there. I mean, I think Luna is great on this map for putting out the damage, but it's so hard. It's so hard to fly. It's such a narrow map, and there's there's nowhere to go. Meanwhile, now is just the best midfielder in the game right now. Not really a question. Oh my god. Oh. Dropletto is just going beast mode. <laughs> Winning his 1v2s just like that. Oh my. Dropload just got in there and all my doubts disappeared as Fudgy Waffles is also in there. The triangles are starting to come out, starting to be formed, the core speed accelerating, forcing Soren to make the defensive plays here, but he is button Imi against two <laughs> incredible forwards and Fudgy Waffles, although low, won't be getting KO'd anytime soon. The power of the side street sitting on one side of it and just staying alive as whoa an overextension by Soren. Oh my God. The goalie is gone, forgot almost own barriers, but it's fine because the log is there. A tool that Bells would not be familiar with. <laughs> An insane save coming out from NXCD who evade strikes to catch the the Julie ult, which almost definitely looked like it was just an easy in, but Dropletto, it just keeps picking them off one by one. Cops on them this time going down and Fudgy just trying to push it through the side street right now trying to get it past NXED get it to drop Leto who's poised to score not quite able to make it and counts on it gets one barrier forgot sitting on a core flip yeah I forgot he rips it tries to get it forward and saves that barrier in the nick of time R forgot really tried Last to get second. it through three people but Wait a second, that angle. Uh oh. Uh oh, what How's happened that? there? Even Drop Leto knows yeah. that something wasn't right. I, I think the Eros Hidden Club members could have gotten a strike on that one. Right, maybe weren't expecting that crazy angle, but yeah, and now we're on Project Obscura, which is, I know everyone's favorite, but oh my god, Drop Leto just hit a, an insane dash punch. And with the fiery flurry, able to get another barrier. Just the, the Julie double barrier master. Oh, forgot. Hitting a strike. You know, I was, about to say, NXDD. I was about to say that Drop Leto has completely beaten the X1 trick allegations. And then he missed a punch, but it's okay. This guy has beaten the allegations. This guy yeah, is this, performing. This guy is putting up the numbers. <sighs> Playing phenomenally right now. And looking to get it in Ooh. right there. Oh my god, almost does it. Oh! Get just didn't the highest cuts in his core flip. What a beast. He's going crazy right now. And he still stays alive despite all the damage being tacked on by Eris Kitten Club. Budgie Waffles winning the strike wars. Drop Leto to the top side. Soren guesses wrong. And that will be a 3-0 first set in the favor of the Bozo Bunch. Yeah, oh my god. Bozo just performing so well in all three roles. Just going through and... I believe Dropletto will be looking for a, a built different here. Not quite much else for him to take unless he's... Oh! Drop taking Leto, speed. Dropletto's interested Dagger in surviving. Swagger, to, to live. <laughs> <laughs> As it turns out, pulling up to Clarion Corp in a hospital bed is not the most fun. A little bit of Stagger Swagger. Stagger Swagger and Fight or Flight. Actually looking really good for his chances of survival. Rapid Fire falling to Forgot. He's just going to be pumping out these logs. And Katsuna picks up Missile Prop. 
Yeah, that, that's a little scary. So, you know, just, yeah, a little, a little terrifying. And then XZD taking aerials, having that extra dash range now, you just become more, <laughs> more relevant, especially to try and respond to the absolute force and presence Dropletto has been in this game. I think an important pick there is also Soren taking away the Monumentalist from Fudgy Waffles. Monumentalist, mm -hmm. generally not the greatest pick on Imee. Of course, it's not actively bad, but it would definitely be pretty low on the priority list. But when you're against the now, you kind of have to take it because Monumentalist now is one of the scariest things in the entire video game. This time, though, a passing play from Eros Kitten Club. A lot of damage sent out. Fudgy Waffles, incredibly low, has the heal. The log from Brigad oh will God. save it. Brings the core back from the brink, but that's still a KO on Mr. Fudgy Waffles. And Brigad will be 1v2'd in the bottom right corner. The bottom left corner. Directions are hard. <laughs> Forgot just pulling off an insane defense there. Holding, but unfortunately, only so much you can do in a 1v2. Not able to hold forever, but again, just super impressive. But it, NXCD here, also, also going crazy, and Sword and Katana are just taking, <laughs> just claiming stagger bars left and right. Fudgy able to heal himself with the now ultimate, but Dropletto, <laughs> not as favored. Using a dash punch though to get into the side streets, but unfortunately, not able to recover enough stagger standing a bit too close to the wall and the missile prop luna ultimate will be taking him out but forgot just hold seize to help fudgy waffles who is now dead forgot good luck <laughs> all you buddy forgot stagger looking a little dangerous as well nxzd is hunting the elusive used but oh my god katsuna almost had the play there but the heal will come in fudgy waffles has respawned the bozo bunch have held on for this point so far. NXZD in with the scoring attempt, with the passive strike, but it's still not enough. Dropletto now lurking, looking for a chance on this goal here, but it'll just ricochet off of the corner, not go to where the Aero Skating Club want it. EKC looking for a passing play, but no, the ricochet will be caught by Dropletto, the strike will be made, the barrier will be opened up, and directly through the members of EKC, this is like deja vu, this happened last time as well, directly through the members, it goes to the top corner. Yeah, I've, I've seen this movie before, unfortunate goal, yeah, you hate to see it, but hey, this is, this is game three, this is do or die, EKC is going to have to pull up and make sure things like that aren't happening anymore. Meanwhile, Dropletto is just going ham trying to get this barrier. But so is NXCD and Katsuna. What? Unable to get that one barrier. So close though. Forgot making a crazy save. Fudgy Waffles claiming a barrier of his own. Big day. <laughs> and keep in mind, although we hyped this up as like a match of the week and oh, like Bozo has never lost a kid. This is incredibly important for playoffs. Both these teams are in like that fourth to sixth range of playoff teams, or more accurately, like fourth to ninth, fourth to tenth even of teams that are looking to make it into playoffs. And a win here is hugely important for later in the season. It gives you that much buffer room, a win against a team like this, because both of these teams are hungry for playoffs. Dropletto is hungry for playoffs. Two barriers in an instant. Forgot his flip available. Can send the core forward. Ops not to this time. But Soren now on a hard defense. It goes directly to Dropletto, and that's a set win. 2-0 up for the Bozo Bunch. They want this win here. Yeah, Dropletto looking a little hungry like Nephew and just crushing them. And oh my god, Fudgy gets timeless. Not quite not quite the presence that Monumentalist is on the character, but Creation Awakenings are just insane on the character. NXDD being gifted with the Demolitionist, which might be a difference maker with how he's been playing this past set. Oh, pushing on the offense a bit, but... Fifth pick, drop Leto, picking up the one-two punch. <laughs> that is crazy. This guy still got one-two. And of course, Forgot <laughs> will always be happy with a hot shot, you know? This is still a great draft for the Bozo Bunch's members that have been pushed to the back of the pick order. And drop Leto is in there. The one-two punch already activated. This guy is content to gobble an orb and wait for the core to arrive at his doorstep yet again. Misses the punch that time, but it's okay. He'll have plenty more chances. As Fudgy Waffles is the one who is limited on his life here. But Drop Leto, this, why does this guy have like a punch every two dribbles? 
He, he is just pulling up with the, I don't know, just punch, punch off CD tech. The Forbidden Julie information. And oh my god. Big barrier get for Bozo Bunch there. And I think CD is looking low. Katsuna is staggered. Almost gets taken out by the Dubu wall, but Dropletto is just rushing up. Oh! Rushing Soren. Almost able to get it, but they're able to save it. Dropletto almost hit to the perfect spot to score that goal. Still stay staying alive somehow. And staying alive that long on a map like this is incredibly impressive. Unstaggers. Stays alive, continues pushing forward, drop Leto with the stagger swagger as well. So that additional speed doing a lot of work for God and Fudgy Waffles desperately defending the barrier. Trying to send it forward to drop Leto and the top side of the map opens up. Drop Leto in position but not quite fast enough on that attempt. The Tokyo Fortress waited out. Fudgy Waffles trying to send it forward. NXCD though has opportunity but cannot get the barrier on the bottom side. And now it's getting a little bit dire for Eris Kitten Club. They need to make something happen now. They need to get the KO. But desperation means they miss so many abilities on Drop Leto. And with that stagger swagger, he will just regen all the way back up. Forgotten now with the flip available. Will they even need it is the question because the Bozo Bunch are looking so comfy right now. Oh, you know, Caster Curse. Hey. <laughs> but Caster Curse forgot forced to burn the flip, loses the barrier, and oh my god. <laughs> forgot with the crazy save, but they're unable to get it. <laughs> oh! But from left field! Katsuna flies in! Says, I'll do it myself. So, Puts it in the top corner right when NXCD gets swept up into the goo. Someone clip that point right now. That That is the wildest <laughs> point I've seen today. Insane. Oh my god. Here, one barrier for Bozo Bunch. Forgot and Soren both burning their ult. Happy Star, I believe they're on the same cooldown. But uh, Dubu Wall just hard counters. Amy Turret. And Soren able to save that one barrier. Almost didn't have it. <laughs> Forgot. Able to save that one. All of these core flips coming out. But Drop Leto with an insane dash punch just sends it in. Oh my, and drop ulted. Leto. Oh my god, but NXCD almost hits the Soren Angle with the Zentaro ult. Oh my god, but Drop Leto just had it covered. This what guy. a crazy... So close. Alright, but as we head into a tied set, this is a lot more tense for Eris Kitten Club. They need to stay alive in this series for their future playoff chances to improve as well. But right now, it's looking all Bozo Bunch, Fudgy Waffle, staying alive despite all of the cooldowns thrown at him. Continuing to midfield, NXZD just not keeping up with the momentum coming out of Drop Leto. The Dropathon continues and will continue <laughs> later in the day, most likely after this series. And, you know, this guy's looking quite happy with his performance as NXZD stuck in Tofu Fortress, but Drop Leto. I just sent off the edge of the map. That's a specialized crater. Yeah, wow. And hey, you're right. I didn't even notice it. Katsuna pulling up with the missile prop extra special specialized. Just an insane build. And hey, that's where all these stagger bars are going. Not, not even Fudgy Waffles on the now is able to heal up all the damage coming out. And Katsuna just had all, all the control in the world in that situation. Uh, a bunch of abilities just throw out I forgot who gets stunned and eventually the core is pushed in beautiful play coming out from Katsuna who's really really turning it up to an 11 this set for EKC and making a ton of important plays that are really saving them yeah N and now it's time for the Bozo Bunch to sweat a little bit because if they lose this set the damage might just start overwhelming them completely from the side of Eros Kitten Club they could just get blown up round start every single time if Katsuna gets any more damage and there's more damage left on the table here and XZD playing it slow forgot continuing to save it even the Luna dash is not enough the center doesn't pop the offense does not continue fast enough for Eras Kitten Club the Tofu Fortress comes up and that's a respawn for Fudgy Waffles who is there on the top side pushing forward and that's another push for the Bozo Bunch Soren has flip available and XZD will stop it for now but the log will descend it forward yet again and without that KO, Eris Kitten Club doesn't have the same momentum they just had. And with that center exploding, Fudgy Waffles blinking back. Bozo Bunch trying to mount an offense here, but, you know, that Firewall Sentry is a good ability. <laughs> it's pretty good, and NXCD able to take that last barrier. Now just trying to get it onto 
from the side of Bozo Bunch. Cuts in a flying in. Gets stopped by the Tofu Fortress. And Dropletto just gets it in. Right through Soren. Who <laughs> just had to eat a dash bunch to the face. And trying to reposition off of that to save it. And now we are at series point. Bozo Bunch looking to seal it out right here, right now. EKC. Just trying to grab a set. <gasps> Soren, no! Soren gives up two oh, barriers! No! And Fudgy Waffles has flip available. Sends it forward, drop letter, taking a lot of damage, but has the orb, the goalie orb of all things, to heal up. And the Bozo Bunch are in full control now. Two barriers to none on a map like this. It's so hard to play. If you're Eris Kin Club, one opportunity is all it takes. And Bozo Bunch has all the time in the world. Drop letter has plenty of meter to play with. And that is it. The Bozo Bunch will secure the victory in week one. They will win the match of the week, and they will move on. Oh my god, Bozo Bunch carrying on. The, <laughs> they're preserving the 100% win rate against EKC right here. No, but EKC <laughs> obviously put up an insane fight. Taking the first game, making an incredibly close second game, and fighting back in that last set in the third game. But Bozo Bunch was just able to convert off of all of their all of their opportunities so quickly, so easily. So hard to defend for EKC against <laughs> Fudgy and Dropletto and everything that they were throwing out. Oh my god. Yeah, just incredibly well played from the Bozo Bunch. They survived, by the way. Bozo Bunch were a team that used to have the reputation of just being incredibly killable. So against teams that are heavy KO comps, they would kind of fold back before their rise to stardom. But, you know, they just played it here. They can survive. And when they survive, they, they will score the goals. They will find a way. Drop Leto addressing the X1 trick allegations quite well. Getting the X banned against him. Picking the Juliet and just not caring. Yeah, he, he just pulled up on the Juliet and made it work like he's been playing it since the day he was born. And just like you said... <laughs> living so many situations that uh, would have killed so many other players but Dropletto was just i don't know i'll i'll say it he was built different whoa <laughs> whoa but but seriously he just he played like an absolute demon on the field not falling to a lot of things that i think are really easy to get KO'd by and then just and doing what he does, converting off of every opportunity that he had and making something happen, put, putting cores in goals just like that. All right. But, you know, that's it for us. Just one series at the end of the day. The match of the week is over. And anything left to say to the people? Uh, no, I think that's it. Hey, phenomenal day one of NASL. We had some banger matches come out. So. No, super cool to see you, and I look forward to next week. And look forward to NASA tomorrow. Hey, got a whole ton of league coming out to watch. And don't go anywhere, by the way. In just five minutes, there will be a little bit of a post-show. You might see some of your favorite players that just played previously that won. Maybe even a certain Luna goalie. You know? So, don't go anywhere.
The opening day of season three is in the books, and I am now joined by some of the winners throughout the day. We've got Frightfully Fresh from Last Call, Slop from Core Overflow, and Fudgy Waffles, who is subbing in for the Bozo Bunch today. Fuzzy. 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 Um, Fudgy. How does it feel coming off of that victory? I mean, we lost game one, so pretty sad, actually. I mean, it should have been a 2-0, but... And Goat should have picked EKC. I I'll say it. We we picked <laughs> Quest Esports, and then we didn't make it in because they were just too good, and they were an NASL caliber team. And instead, we played against this other... No, okay. It was a good game. We had a lot of fun. The comms were really funny. We were yapping a little bit, but I mean, I I'm happy. I'm really happy we won. Undefeated NASL Season 3 midfielder right here, right now. <laughs> Looking you for mentioned team. you were making a yeah you were making a looking <laughs> for team post, which is why we were on such a long break. Yeah, we. You, you I wanna, you want to state finish. your claim now? Yeah, if anyone, any role, looking for like any starting position, any role, I'll take it. Any team, even you guys, EKC, love you, Soren. <laughs> uh, will I will I'll take the spot if if you have it up for me. But um, otherwise, if you need to bring me in three days before the match, just hit me up. And we'll make it work that way too. So, yeah, okay. GG though. No, it was, it was, they were those were really fun games. Either way, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about. Of course, you mentioned that it wasn't quite the the clean two zero that you would have liked. Uh, decided electing to go into the Luna Mirror versus Kitsuno. What's well, kind of the thought process there? You think it's maybe about even because Kitsuno's played this character for a long while, right? What's what was your thought process kind of going for that pick? Um, I wasn't. I'm mean, always fine. I'm always fine. I'm down to pick it into Vaughn. I'm down to pick it into Katsuna. I I really like playing Luna on that map. It's really fun, and I think I'm really really good at it. Uh, it's not. It's super comfort for me too. Like other characters, I'd pick on that map. Like I could have picked like Era. I could have picked Now. There's a world where maybe Now's better there because of just our comp in general. Like I think they just had more damage, which made it really hard if the Prize Fighter start. I think without Prize Fighter start. Like we, I feel like you kind of saw it in the rounds too, in the rounds where they weren't able to scale their damage super hard into us and just kind of KO us. Like we were just able to um, sort of just find the right angles to maneuver to get goals and sets. And But, I mean, they picked a good comp that round. Uh, it was kind of what we were expecting, but it was, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. Well, you talk about the now, you talk about the Luna. Those are two staples of the core overflow composition slop. <laughs> uh, and you held it down on that Luna character in numerous instances today. Uh, what was going through your mind during some of those holds? Uh, during the big one, uh, it might have been loud in my in our comps. It might have been a lot of screaming. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it was fun. I think we were the only team this week to not drop a single set, so I am really proud of us this week. Yeah, held it down uh, and looked pretty strong. What, you all have been playing together for two-ish months now? Is this roster of three? Yeah, How has that kind of, like, evolution been? You know, it feels like Joker probably, what, now is completely adjusted to the whole midfield thing. Uh, and then you kind of stepping in in the goalie box, which obviously I don't think anyone doubted your ability in the goalie box, but now we're actually seeing it come together on the on the largest stage yeah it's been about two three months together and uh me and joker are finally getting the chemistry together you know leo's always been a beast we never had to worry about him but yeah just uh today i just want to say that uh me and joker's double goalie stronger today and will continue to be stronger in the future well looking forward to that of course and fresh uh you are also able to hold it down there for uh, your win today versus the soon Dubu Strikers. But I want to get your thoughts, especially on that first game. Because one of the things I first noticed, you know, first game of the day, right? You're playing Rasmus as the second pick, and it ends up being the striker select is the Luna and Drakkar forward. That feels like not the best composition to go into, right, as the Rasmus goalie. Uh, so I kind of want to get your thoughts in terms of just locking in that character. Obviously, we know you've played this character since time immemorial but what's the you know when you see that kind of end up getting locked in what's going through your mind what adjustments do you have to make while you're playing that rasp so thinking of three of these picks usually you got x you got julie i forgot about luna i think we all did um but also rasmus for me it's just so comfortable 
if I'm ever feeling a little bit like worried or anything like that, if I just pick Rasmus, I'm just big chilling. Like I, I felt like we could bring that back even from the brink of disaster. Um, it's the LC special, we'll say. So <laughs> the, the adjustments we have to make, we definitely, I, I feel like we're a team that makes really good adjustments. We just kind of take a while to get there, uh, but we're working on that. So, well, speaking of adjustments, you had to make a pretty big one, given that your uh, primary scorer was out for the day. Lumos coming in. A little bit of the Orbits reunion here. Uh, and of course, the X era looked about as anyone would have expected it. Lost the first couple sets and then came roaring back. What was that like, kind of playing with Lumos? And how were you all able to adapt to that kind of different style? Because Lumos plays completely different uh, strikers than Borg does. Lumos is a beast. That's all I'm going to say in regards to that. <laughs> uh, he hasn't played a brawler. Or, like the last time he's played a brawler was like three months ago or something, if I'm not mistaken or he's only played it like five times. Regardless, he you can slot him into any team. He does incredibly well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he played with uh, Streak and Snake during um, the Pro League Invitational. But he, he's an absolute monster. I'm really thankful that he was there. And obviously, shout out to Hook as well. Like, I don't think that I'd be able to keep my mental going if he wasn't there constantly helping me get the core out if I'm ever in danger. I feel like we work really well together, so... Certainly sounds like it, and that's uh, why I think a lot of people were incredibly excited to watch Last Call uh, in the bulk of the season. But that was it for day one. What kind of surprises did you all see? Fudgy, I'll start with you. Don't know how many of the games you were able to catch because you were probably warm-up screwing for a, lot, a decent chunk of these. But looking at the results now, any major standout things to you? I was asleep for most of the games <laughs> and then scrimming for like the half an hour before Classic. our match. Classic. But I, what I did, I did wake up though, and then I did catch the end of uh, of Fresh's game, and I was like, "Oh dang, that's the comps were super interesting." I was super surprised by the comps picked. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, honestly, I was, I'm rooting a little bit for Sundubu, but I love all the guys on both those teams, so it's it's, it's going to be tough either way. I was, yeah, but the comps are crazy. Like I was like, "That's um, that." I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting. I wasn't sure if soon like I, I Sundubu. Uh, they're interesting where they're always like changing what their goalie picks are for each map. But it looks like they're back to the Finney a little bit. Both teams trying out the Finney too. A lot of teams that try that out too. It's like people. I think it's it's I think it's weird because like some people underrate it, some people overrate it. I can't tell if it's like really really good or not right now. And I keep I'm trying to keep my eye on that, and that's something that caught my eye. Well, fresh. Any thoughts on the Finney specifically? Dead eye start. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, we <laughs> practiced that comp the the Drakar X. Finney kind of towards the start of when we were trying out as a team and then we shelved it and then we saw dead eye start and we thought we have to bring it back even though borg's not on the x we got lumos like i said earlier he's an absolute beast so we tried it out it worked incredibly well so i like it dead eye start there you go enough said uh slop anything stand out to you and if not i'm curious to get your take as well on the uh dubu midfield oh, I was just pick that, that we up. saw uh Obviously, there might have been a monochrome of trolling in some of those striker selects, but I've also heard rumblings that it might be kind of legit. I completely disagree. I don't think DB4 would troll. People like to pick it on cast last starts, but it's just, uh, yeah, no, it just still gets completely outclassed by other brawlers. But the the biggest prize for me this week is definitely the LC20 uh, Sundubu. I thought it would be closer, maybe 2 1, but yeah, that's insane. But Sad Boys and Demons, uh, I don't know what they were doing for Team Select today. <laughs> uh, Demon somehow dropped a game to Oshi, picking some interesting comps, and Sad Boys picked an interesting comp too, but somehow pulled it out. So, yeah, yeah interesting um, comp we, and couldn't use a primary. Yeah, on, that, was uh, Dubu. Very, that was very cool. Hey, at least they avoided the punishment. That is true. Uh, speaking of the punishment, which would have carried over to next week, it will not. Let's take a look at next week's matches here coming up. Uh, it'll be Core Flow versus EKC, Demons Raw versus Quest, Sad Boys versus Ndubu, Oshi versus Bun Bun, and Last Call versus the Bozo Bunch. Uh, Fresh, I'll start with you here. Uh, what match are you most looking forward to? Are you excited to go up against EKC after seeing what you just saw? We're not going up against EKC. We're going up against Bozo. Bozo. Uh, we're going to show I, you know, EKC I how to beat them is what it's going to happen. Uh, we lost to them yesterday in last night lobster, uh, or late night lobster, last night lobster. Um, but you know they got they had fudgy, so yeah, I, I, I was I gonna say, yeah, yeah they I'm had a better midfielder. Just, yeah, 
Uh, but I'm really excited to see that. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of Bozo, even though we're going to go against them. So as far as I'm concerned, I can't lose. If they win, they win, and I'm happy for them. If I win, well, screw you, Bozo. We're great. Um, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, uh, I will. <laughs> or Fudge, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I will. I mean, you did. You said it better than I could. I I will win, as an I muncher, <laughs> will win That's, that game. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Slop, uh, you are the team that gets EKC next week. Uh, how are you feeling about that one? And and what else are you looking forward to on the schedule? I mean, all I have to say, if Soren plays anything like he did today, it's not going to be close. He won't. He was handicapped today. He, he had a different uh, setup. Whatever he wants to say, whatever he wants to say. But uh, yeah, if he plays anything like he played today, I think it's going to be another 3 0 3 0. We're not dropping a set against them. But another interesting match I'm ready to see is Oshi versus Bun Bun, two of the lowerish rated teams that I'm ready to see finally square off against each other outside of Dubu Cup. Fudgy, what are you thinking about as we head into week two here? Um, I think I'm making my way back to Dubu probably next week, unless anyone just DMs me. So I'm really excited for that matchup. We'll be doing a lot of prep with them, I think. So and it's really fun. Like one thing I wanted to talk about too. This I'll try to be quick. Is that like it was really? I'm really really glad. I'm really that forgot and Dropletta reached out to me and we're down to have me fill in today. Uh, it was super fun prepping with them and like figuring everything out. I was. I got PL. I also PLX has also been awesome. I mean, that team's insane. We, we saw them go crazy yesterday, and they've also they they're so on top of it. Their scrims, their prep is awesome. Um, but and it's fun to prep for NASA too. But like this week, I was like really focused on this NASA game, and it's just it's cool to just still be there and like feel like I'm still a part of everything, despite uh, the landing incident. <laughs> a landing incident. <laughs> That's You're nassle in my yeah. heart, Fudgy. You're nassle in my heart. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. We'll leave it at that. Uh, folks, the weekend of Omega Strikers is not over. The North American Strikers Academy Season 3 will begin tomorrow. Be on the lookout for more information about the stream for that and where you can find more of those matches. And then... Uh, Monday, I believe there's another tournament, the Westie Draft League or something that's happening. So plenty more Omega Strikers to come on as we kick off 2024 uh, and now with a brand new Strikers League season. We will see you all next week in the North American Strikers League. Same time, same place. We hope you all have a good night. Take care, everyone.